All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, because I can't really tell. Time zones are crazy, right? Uh, welcome back to Duel Links Team Wars Season 9, Week 10, the final week of regular season play for Season 9, and then uh, we roll over into double digits. Uh, I am your host for this match, Diatonic. This is a matchup between Divine and YGO Game Life, the first of two that I'm going to be uh, hosting this weekend. And, uh... It is an incredibly tense time in uh, the Team Wars League at the moment. There are a ton of teams that are right on the edge of qualifying for playoffs. So uh, more than ever, this weekend, every duel counts. And uh, there, there's a lot of tension, I think. A lot of teams are going to be looking for uh, some quick wins to try and uh, punch their card into the playoffs. Um, there are so many ties in so many divisions. So I think... Uh, you may see some of the most intense games you've seen yet because, uh, yeah, every single victory is important. So uh, we are just set to get underway here in just a moment. Uh, it looks like they're both sitting down at the table, and uh, yeah, they are. So let's just go right into it. Slap on into game number one. And apparently they have switched who's starting uh, for uh, YGL, I think. <laughs> so hold on. Let me switch the active player because... Uh, oh, wait, no, no, no. That's right. I remember now. Shirinui is also snizzles. <laughs> We had this last time I casted YGL, so. Alright, our first matchup is here. Uh, Victor Lee out for Divine and Shirinui number one, a uh, a top 10 Casey Cup global player out for YGL. And it looks like it's a matchup between Jaden Ubel and uh, good old Antinomy or Bruno, depending on, uh, you know, what you want to what, what you wanna call him. So, Victor opens with the three back row pass. Interesting. All right. And uh, we have seen Shirinui play this. Uh, last. I casted uh, YGL last weekend, and we did see some TGs that did put in some work. So he's going to start with Misk. Uh, if you haven't read him, he's on your screen right now. I do recommend you read him. And then Booster Raptor is going to hit play. And then the Charge of the Light Brigade uh, milling uh, hits a Book of Moon, an MST, <laughs> and a Screw Serpent. But he'll get the raid in, so we're ready to start synchroing. Because TG is a lot about synchro laddering. You synchro up to really big synchros. So if you if you don't know much about <laughs> if you don't know much about synchro summoning, highly recommended you watch this match because you will be sick of it. <laughs> Even though it is definitely my favorite mechanic, there's a ton of it in TGs. So, uh, Jaden Ubel, I mean, hero is a thing. I I. I'm a huge hero fan, so <laughs> I don't want to, uh, I don't want to, to, you know, get my hopes up, but, I mean, we're looking at Divine Neos, Matt, and Sleeves on, uh, on blue side from Victor, so I'm not sure. We'll, <laughs> we'll wait and see. I won't get too hype here. Um, let's see. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if Shuri used this build or not in the KCC. I'm not 100% sure, but, all right, let's go. We are opening the regulators, bro. TG Star Guardian, level 5 Synchro. And he is a tuner himself. So we're going to get some, maybe some Axel Synchro. <laughs> sure uses limit 2s on the charge. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so Star Guardian lets him drop another TG from his hand to keep the ladder going. Um, because, yeah, I mean, Victor's front row is open, but... Mm, you never know if you should trust that or not, so... Alright, uh, Screw Serpent to summon back the Booster Raptor. He's uh, looking pretty screwed out there, if you will. I'm sorry, I won't do that too much. <laughs> Casey Seabull's Flight Control. Yeah, I think so. I'm not 100% sure. I haven't seen the build. Alright, and we have a Wonder Magician now too. TG Wonder Magician. And if I remember correctly, yeah, this is to get rid of back row. Because it lets you destroy one spell or trap when it's synchro summoned. So we're going to try to cut into some back row here on Victor's Field. It is, it is use it or lose it. He's going for the Book of Moon! Gonna flip the Wonder Magician down. Oh, but uh, Shirinui responds with the Forbidden Lance. Make it uh, unaffected by spell and trap effects. But <laughs> TTH flip! It's a back and forth. We have a four chain in game one of this matchup. Wow. So it, it ultimately resulted in uh, Shirinui's board getting wiped out. But uh, Set Delta Excel is gonna activate so he can summon the Recipro Dragonfly from his extra deck. Whew. We got a four chain already. That's how you know we're in for some in for some action here. All right, now Victor's turn once more. So uh, we saw Book of Moon and Trench. Doesn't tell me much. Ah, okay, we have Harpies. 
D I assume Jaden Ubell has uh, ties that bind then. I I must not have it unlocked, evidently. <laughs> you know how it goes. All right, so uh, Chandler first. Discard a Harpy card to special summon a Harpy monster to summon Perfumer. Uh, and then you can uh, add a spell or trap that specifically has Harpy Lady Sisters listed in the effect text. And then we have Cyber Slash Harpy Lady, the Synchro. Uh, whenever you activate a, an effect of a spell or a trap outside of the uh, outside of the damage step, you can uh, stuff one of your opponent's monsters back into their hand. Or, if it's, you know, an extra deck summon monster, put it back in that extra deck. And I've seen a ton of Harpies played lately. Uh, <laughs> I've been seeing some of the results from the first couple matches that have concluded for this weekend, and uh, yeah, there was a ton of Harpy. And they've gone on some pretty insane win streaks, so we'll have to see if Victor's hold up here. Uh, just checked. One Sharon reported was set Delta XL. Okay, and I definitely, I, I think I've seen, I don't remember what the build was, but I'm pretty sure I've seen a screenshot of a, of Shirinui's build on, like, DLM or something, so. Okay. Alright, so yes, Ties That Bind, swing in for 31, drop Shirinui to 900, and a Swallow's Nest will finish it, I believe, unless we have some surprise hand traps around Boy in there. Otherwise, uh, you can float out one of your harpies to swing in, and that is game one. Fast for Victor. OTK right off the bat. And that will be Divine taking the lead in game one. So a pretty solid start. So that means that Shirinui will go down by one deck, and already the TGs, they fall. So Divine will take the first blood of the match. Definitely what you want to see. <laughs> Even after that insane four chain right off the bat, I mean, <laughs> that, that's how you know. You know we're going to be in for something good here. So, uh, you, you know, anybody that's been here knows your boy. I, I bring, I always have that thing on me. And that thing is data, and I have plenty of it for you. And I'll, uh, we'll hit on it over time. I won't do everything right out of the gate. So, hey, what's up, Tricky? How's it going, dude? Welcome back. Okay, and uh, YGL is actually going to repeat here, so uh, that means that one of their two repeats will be used, and Shirinui is going to replay the same deck. So we are going to use one replay for YGL, and uh, yeah, already game one using the replay. It, it seems like an oof, but I definitely have seen a lot of wars that don't even end up using both of them, if either of them. So yeah, maybe, maybe go weapons free with your repeats. They, they seem fairly confident in the deck's ability, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, quick, uh, for anybody that doesn't know the background on these teams, uh, Divine is actually a playoff contender in the past. Uh, they qualified in the playoffs during Season 7. Uh, they're currently ranked at number 6 in the Aroma Garden division uh, at a record of 3-6, and six, and they're coming into this match on a 2-loss streak, so they're looking to try and break that this time, <laughs> for sure. Um... So Victor is going to set three back row and pass, so <laughs> deja vu. And I'm not talking about the initial D meme. All right, Shirinui opens with the MST this time. Let's go. And yes, Meme Maker is on Divine, by the way, so I, I, I do know who, who Meme Maker is. Oh, wow, no charge this time. We're just going straight into the Raiden with the, with the Misk. Have you read him? Highly recommend you read him. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Yeah, so um, Divine's Division, uh, Aroma Garden, uh, is super competitive. Um, there's like, there's like a ton of teams that are tied with the exact same record. So I think there's still like two or three playoff spots that have yet to be determined. Um, not necessarily guaranteed that they'll make it in, but a win would definitely help them. Depending on how things play out over the course of the weekend, for sure. Yeah. So, uh, and then last season, actually, they ended up, uh, it looks like placed in 24th overall in the standings, so they're looking to try and improve off of last season as much as they can. Alright, let's go. Wonder Magician summon with the Booster Raptor, but no Synchro, no level 6. Just direct with Wonder Magician, pass turn. And now Victor is down to one back row again. Book of Moon and Tretch! Huh, this looks familiar. This looks familiar. Yeah, if this is a 2-0, if they take out Shirinui right here, that's that's going to be a huge start for Divine. An absolutely mind-blowing start. But I, ha I have casted YGL a few times, and uh, they definitely have a couple of uh, heavy hitters. <laughs> they have a couple of pretty, pretty hype uh, people that like to go on really long win streaks, so you may see some of that too, and uh, 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk YGL as well because uh, they're actually in their, their freshman season. They have a lot of very skilled and very experienced players on their team. But as, as a unit, uh, this, as far as I could tell by the data, uh, this is their first season. Um, and not, not a bad start. Uh, they're ranked sixth in the Dragon Ravine division. Uh, and their record is four and five. So they could actually win this and break even in their first season, which considering the level of competition in a league like Team Wars is a, is a pretty good start. All right, Elegant Egotist coming out now. Uh, normal summon the Harpy Chandler, but no search on it. He would have had to discard the only card in hand to do it, which was the Egotist. Okay, Swallow's Nest next. Okay, he's not the greatest hand, but it looks like he's trying to recover from it. So he is going to send the uh, Chandler to the grave to special summon a different Harpy on top of it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, actually, Dragon the Dragon Ravine Division may be the most contested right now in terms of playoff qualifications uh, because teams ranked all the way. The only team <laughs> that has a breakout record is in first place. Teams in positions two through eight all have records of five and four, four and five, and three and six. So it is anyone's game here. YGL wants to win as many duels as they can. They want to close this thing out like... Real, you know, you want you want to go on a win streak. So, game one loss is not necessarily the way you want to start, but every duel is important for them. They actually have a negative twelve round differential, which is something they use for tiebreakers. So, if records are even, then they look at how many rounds total you've won. Uh, rounds is in each duel, so they do want to try to, <laughs> to win as much as they can. All right, let's go. So we have Cyber Slash and then a Harpy's Feather Rest. Put three Harpies from Grave back in a deck and draw two cards. Uh, normally it's one, but if you have a uh, level five or higher Harpy on the board, which Cyber Slash is eight, you get to draw two cards. So, mm, yeah, we, we take those. And uh, that will put Wonder Magician back into the extra deck off of Cyber Slash's effect. So now it's just a Booster Raptor. Uh, but Victor's going to pass turn. He's... A lot of TGs have effects where once they uh, end up in the graveyard, if they're destroyed or whatever at the end of the turn, they can search and replace themselves, add new TGs to your hand. So he's going to try to avoid activating that. And now sure, I know he's going to play charge, but that puts Booster Raptor right back into his hand. Oof. So yeah, Cyber Slash's effect activates even when your opponents use spell and traps. Hey, what's up, Queen? Uh, no, actually, uh, RNG won uh, the Golden Week Grand Prix. The full brackets posted over in the server in the announcements channel. And uh, yeah, gold, silver, bronze for first, second, and third. So, <laughs> Orange, she says no idea. Modesty. Modesty is key. <laughs> I didn't even notice this is a Prisma Cyber Slash, by the way. This is some uh, some flexing. You know, it's it's it sucks that we can't go to... Well, some people can. Japan can't. <laughs> it sucks that you can't go to locals and flex on people with your nice collector's rares, your ghost rare, dark magician. But uh, hey, I mean, uh, a Prisma Cyber Slash, pretty good. All right, Booster Raptor. Two Booster Raptors and a pass from Shiranui. And Victor's got three cards. First up, Harpy's Hunting Ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can destroy Speller Traps when you summon, and uh, that is going to put one Booster Raptor back in a hand. If he's got a monster... Oh, boy. Yep, Channeler. Harpy's Hunting Ground will blow itself up. That's fine. Channeler, discard one to go search. Maybe Oracle? Yeah, okay. Oracle. The Prisma Oracle, too. Man, Victor's got the, the real style over here with the Prisma Harpies. All right, so we're going to overlay as well. I believe it's going to be... Oh, Abyss Dweller. Mm, is that... Is that... Oh, wait, no, he's got, uh, yeah, that's going to be game. Abyss Dweller's effect activates, uh, graveyard effects can't be activated, and then he will use uh, ties that bind to punch over for 43, and that is game two, a quick, decisive 2-0 for Victor. And uh, TG's fall to Harpies, and now Divine jumps out ahead right out of the gate with a quick back-to-back -back win. So that means that Shiranui is now eliminated from the war. Let me do this. So now YGL is down one repeat. It did not uh, did not come in clutch for them. And now they will be sending up a, a new duelist to try and face off against the Harpies. 
remember the cyber harpy uh i i don't remember to be honest all right it looks like byakuya is gonna come out next for ygl let me update numbers okay here we go all right game number three now divine jumping right out of the gate a strong start for them We'll have to see if they are able to continue their momentum with Harpies. And uh, we may be getting some Fire Kings here, it looks like. Can't confirm that 100% yet, but we will see. Uh, what's up, Bernie? Uh, Silver Week. Yeah, I do know there's a Silver Week. Uh, I was actually here for the rarest Golden Week of them all because that was when uh, the Emperor changed hands uh, and we had a really long Golden Week. Okay, yep, Fire Kings are here. Another uh, very heavily played deck at the moment, thanks to the, the ban list updates, because uh, if you're not aware, all matches going forward uh, are on the new ban list. So all new restrictions apply, and uh, skills that are being changed have to be activated under their new conditions. All right, so Byakuya starts off pretty decent. We have uh, Garunix already set up, Arvada on board, Fire King Island, and a back row, too. Nice. That's a that's a pretty solid start. Can't be too mad about that. And he's going to negate Garunix to stop um, Arvada from being blown up, but that also blows up Garunix, so he is live once again in the graveyard. And he does have the, the big boy, the 30-card Fire King. Fire Fist. I haven't seen very much Fire Fist yet. I don't actually, I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've casted Fire Fist at all. At least in Team Wars. I think maybe there were one or two in the in the GWGP, but none in Team Wars so far. Uh, hmm. Alright, now the question is, what do you do about this? Because you know that Garunix is coming. Whenever Garunix is destroyed by a card effect, uh, during the next standby phase, whichever that may be, opponents or yours... Uh, you special summon it and destroy all the other monsters on the board. And Fire Kings are really good at destroying their own monsters. So you know it's coming. So the question is, do you try to, to go turbo really fast and win before they can get it off? I don't think he can because, you know, you have an 1800 Arvada already. He can stuff it back to hand with Harpies for sure. But then you still have the one back row. And uh, I've definitely seen a lot of TTHs in Fire Kings. Any... any any kind of disruption could stop that and basically leave him wide open for a turn. For Garunix to just clean house and for Byakuya to, to sneak in for the win. So, Harpies are incredibly strong. They've been getting a lot of play. I mean, they're really good at just cleaning the board off and putting everything back in your opponent's hand. But they do seem a little flimsy. Like, they do kind of die to just any old normal removal. And Fire King removal, which is their own monsters, gets around Cyber Slash. So you can't just be like, okay, well, you're going to activate TTH, but I got to put something back in your hand before you kill my Cyber Slash. No, now it's, I'm going to destroy with this monster effect, and you don't get anything out of it. Oh, all right, nice. He's going to destroy a Barong. So, yeah, we've, <laughs> he had a really solid start. This is without Destiny Bond, by the way. All right, there you go. There's the TTH. So he is going to destroy Arvada and Garunix, and that will, uh, once again, put Garunix online. So he is going to buy himself a turn here. He, he survives. Some SHS Ninja Stall Fire King. No Fire King Monster can't get rid of it. Which one? Alright, so Garunix is live. He will be special summoned right about now. So now he's got a big old 2700 Chicken Man over there. And then Barong's effect will let him grab a Fire King card out of his deck. So they tutor. They have really easy to use board wipe loops. It's it's no wonder that the deck is a solid pick right now. All right, uh, Perfumer first. So I think he's going to attempt to put the Grunix back in hand. I think this was the opening he was waiting for. Now he only needs one spell to flip. I don't think we I don't think we've seen an MST or anything on Victor's side. I was about to say, because if he goes into Cyber Slash and plays something to get rid of the Fire King Island, that would be perfect. Because Cyber Slash would go off first. In that case, 
I believe, the way the chain works out. Cyber Slash would go off first, put Grunix back in a hand, move the Fire King away. Its effect activates to clear the person's board who controlled the Fire King Island, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> this is like three or four turns in advance. I'm, I'm thinking a little too far ahead here. All right, so we are going to... Ooh, all right, we're going to Harpy Channeler, or uh, going to Harpy Channeler to activate the Haunting Ground, bro. Ooh, TTH. Okay, all right, all right. So he's going to destroy his own Garunix. Swallow's Nest. Victor's going to float the Channeler out. Another Swallow's Nest. Is Fire King usable with only two Garunix? Yeah, definitely. Three helps, but they have enough search that you could potentially play. It, it definitely may have some consistency issues, but they're good enough at being able to get stuff out of their deck that you could definitely play it. All right, so this kind of ended in favor of Victor here. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> he definitely has the upper hand here, but Fire King does play uh, hand traps. So, you know, Sphere Karibo, Veil, anything like that could help for sure. And the question is, does Victor want to take the chance on that? Because he's going to be chancing activating Destiny Draw and giving Byakuya a chance to find a way out. And that is the question he's got to answer. With only 1,300 life left, he doesn't have a lot of room to wiggle here. So, the question is, what do we do? Alright, Oracle. Structure is $5 each. I think it's something like that, maybe? Yeah, so Oracle, whenever it's special or normal summoned, you can grab one of your uh, Harpy Speller Traps out of the grave. And let's check Victor's grave here. What does he have? Swallow's Nest. Oh, he doesn't have any targets for it. Because it has to, I think it has to list specifically Harpy Lady Sisters. It does. Yes. Oracle's effect has to list Harpy Lady Sisters specifically. And he has none because Swallow's Nest is just about winged beast monsters. We've seen it a lot in Harpies. It's basically a Harpy card at this point, but yeah, it doesn't actually list Harpy Lady Sisters on it. So, all right, he's going to go for Abyss Dweller instead, which, yeah, that makes sense. Stop graveyard effects from activating. Tie that binds. Swing in for 18. So, uh, no activation. Uh, yeah, Harpy's Hunting Ground does, but uh, as far as I can tell, it. oh, wait, he did still get to get it. Huh. There you go. Yeah, y'all are right. Yeah, it does list it. I thought it was win any harpy lady. Might be. It happens. I don't have Oracle. I can't play harpies, so <laughs> I'm not as familiar with the card text. But yeah. All right. Yeah, Arvada, just big elephant man. Just punch over it. Just punch over it, bro. All right. And uh, Victor's down to one back row with 1,200 life. Oh, no, he's got two. Text boxes. Yay. Okay, he's got two back row. Uh, Byaki has another Fire King Island. He didn't even need the Destiny draw. He didn't need it. All right, so he is going to destroy a monster. What's he popping? All right. He's going to blow up an elephant from hand. Go get Barong? Uh-huh. And then Arvada and Grave will activate, which uh, lets him summon back the Chicken Man. No effects, but it'll be destroyed at the end of turn, so it will be online once it hits the Grave. If he somehow does not win this turn, but every single monster on that board is lethal. Alright, Book of Moon first. Flip him down. But no, that's all he's got. Just a book. I have no idea what the other backer was, but it did not help. And uh, YGL is on the board now. Byakuya gets their first win. So that will be YGL 1. So after a quick couple of wins, Victor finally takes takes one L. Pretty much a must win. Yeah, they kind of needed to win that. And like, it seems, it seems like a rough matchup. Because like I said, Harpy's kind of die to fire kings like cyber slash can protect your stuff from getting completely wiped out 
but when your when your board wipes are all based on a big old chicken on a monster card, it hurts. It's it's not as effective. All right, what do we got? What do we got? We have uh, we have uh, Ubel now, so maybe Thunder Dragon, Alert by Darkness, Charge of the Light Brigade, and there you go, Mills of Veil, Dragon Roar, and Dragon Dark off of the charge. Not a, not a bad set of mills. The veil the veil hurts. Veil does suck, but Roar and Dark and Grave, perfectly acceptable. Okay, let me do my job here and actually update the stats. So Victor is currently sitting at two and one, and now Biakia picks up the first win for YGO. Hey, what's up, Trin? Welcome back. Hello. All right, there we go. I believe my math is correct. <laughs> Feel free to bully me if my math is wrong because I suck at it. Thunder chicken or fire chicken? Which one y'all pick? Mine, fire chicken. Mm, fire chicken is pretty good, I will say. All right, goes for gigantic castle. Bro, he's gigantic. Oh my God, he's the blue eyes killer. More powerful than blue eyes on the card. Bigger numbers, let's go. All right, uh, Onslaught of the Fire Kings. Special summon a chicken. And it will die at the end of turn, so he'll have an online chicken ready to go. Yeah, I was about to say, I don't think there's any way Biakia can get over Gigantic Castle on this turn, so his opportunity to set stuff up and get ready for Garunix to wipe the board. Because, yeah, that Gigantic Castle is uh, probably going down here. Oh, wait, Arvada effect? Does He want? He wants to negate the Garunix. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so Arvada can can negate and destroy monsters. So he's going to negate Garunix from coming in and blow him up. So he's online once more. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, either it's I have a hand trap or I'm going to wipe out your board even harder. So, hey, YGL Ash, thank you for the follow. Hello. Why to get fire chicken to hold on to it. He wants to hang on to it. Because, yeah, hand trap and or I'm going to wipe your board even harder. So go ahead. Summon whatever you want. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> mm, it seems risky. I don't know. I, I don't like taking those kind of risks for sure. So even I'm a little, uh, you know, makes me a little anxious, but it's fine. All right, Dragonhawk effect and Roar effect, both in Banish. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, just checking in, don't mind me. Probably gonna go to Oh, yeah. Go get some sleep. Sleep is important. <laughs> I haven't slept much either. So I've been busy <laughs> for like a whole week straight. But, yeah. Thanks for coming. M7? Yeah, I think so. Maybe. Level 6, please. Please. Hey, what's up, Keegan? Nothing welcome back, dude. Yeah, I was about to say, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of updates, a lot of new cards, some uh, some quality of life updates, all that kind of stuff. They've been changing a lot lately. All right, he does have the veil, so the call out was true. He said, "Come at me, bro. I got that hand trap. You're not getting through this turn, at least. Maybe." Hmm. And uh, that is a live Garunix, so that's kind of a big boy. Watch Victor hand rip the one veil. Okay, that didn't have. I didn't see that. That would have been very sad. <laughs> Need sleep. No sleep. Yeah, go sleep. <laughs> Thanks for the lurk, Queen. I appreciate it. All right. Hmm. So he did blow up the Arvada. But I mean, as far as I can tell, one way or another, that Garunix is, is coming now. He is coming out right now. And uh, there's no Arvada to stop him, so he is going to wipe the board. And that's 27. Thunder Dragon do be having some hand traps, so I can't say this is GG, but... Ugh. All right, let's go. Garunix wipes the board. And now it is Byakuya's duel to win, or attempt to win. Yes, there is a new ban list. Uh, this match is actually being played under the new ban list. So, hey, there we go. Fire Formation Tenki, a new card. Go get a level 4 lower Beast Warrior monster and add it to your hand. And also, all your Beast Warriors gain 100. So, hmm. All right, and another back row. 
And the Arvada. He's got lethal on board. Does Victor have a way to stop it? No, he doesn't. And they are going to trade back and forth. Byakuya knocks out Victor. And that is a 2-2 game. We have, we, have a, we have a match on our hands here. We got a 2-2 tied game. So Byakuya eliminates Victor. And that is YGL's first KO. All right, let's reset here. So now, who are they sending to face off with the, with the kings, the king chicken? Blazgen didn't get touched much. No, not really. With the stuff that's getting played now in place, I don't, I don't think they needed to. It's still gonna be playable. It's still strong, but. All right, so Biakia now with the with the quick, two O. We traded two O's here, so nobody has gained. <laughs> Has gained progress. We are uh, we are sitting on uh, a quick two two. So let's go. We have a we have a match. Uh, what's top deck right now? Harpies is one of them for sure. Harpies, Fire Kings, Water Exceeds. Um, Blue Eyes is still going to get played. Thunder Dragon is pretty decent right now. Uh, I do see some Triamid here and there. A little bit of TG here and there. But, yeah, uh, Star Seraph Dark Lord is pretty much dead. <laughs> it's definitely not nearly as uh, desirable as it once was. The skill changes hurt. So, yeah. Wait, what? Baikulia? Huh? Wait, what? Byak Byakuya's name? Nani? Nani? Alright, so now we're just waiting on... Uh, Divine's next player, whoever that may be. I don't know. Playing Luna. Yeah, Luna Light did get hurt. Um, I, and I, I think the ban on Luna Light was kind of preemptive because of uh, Fire Formation Tanky's release in the newest box. Because that 100% uh, buffs the heck out of them. So, alright, looks like Viper. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Feel free to bully me if I'm not, because I suck at pronouncing names. Cause you know, there's like, there's like vampires and stuff like that. That's a, that's a thing, a word that exists. So you never know. Anyway, Viper. <laughs> we'll go with that until I'm told otherwise. <laughs> Apologies. I am the worst. Hey, what's up, Grim? Welcome back, dude. Hello. All right. So Viper versus Biakia. Let's go. Are we finally going to break this, uh, this streak on, uh, on YGL's side? And it looks like we're going to get, uh, fire versus water. You got water exceeds, so I believe they're gonna go for that good old, uh, good old abyss dweller. Maybe a little bit of a uh, little bit of the fire king counter here, perhaps. Trying to stop graveyard effects from going off. All right, let's go. So, uh, fire king island to destroy the sphere Karibo. Interesting. And uh, search Barong. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, Arvada to start, which uh, pretty common start. Not not bad to have on your side of the field at all. So. And one backer as well. We we saw some pretty uh, pretty successful TTH flip somewhere in there at some point. But uh, yeah, let's go. Elephant boy, he is the Pog elephant. Okay, so Viper's first turn, water exceeds for sure because it's it's shark. <laughs> it's 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 shark. Need I say more? Hmm. Mmm, so as of right now, Byakia doesn't have um, a Garunix because he searched for Barong off of the uh, Fire King Island activation, and that's the one card in his hand. So, I mean, he can always just get one, but interesting. Not going to not gonna go for it straight away. Maybe maybe I'm just Ungabunga because, like, I always go for it, <laughs> but Arvada does have very nice artwork. That is true. He looks, he looks very nice. Look at him. He purdy. Alright, Arvada's effect. He's gonna stop the D.Va, which, yeah, not a bad Arvada. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, was, he got the Barong set up for the Arvada activation. Yeah. Because Barong's effect will activate 
now, basically. And he has a Book of Moon too, so just flip the Diva down, bro. Say nah, no more of that. Just flip it face down. No thank you. Book of Money. Finally, instead of being destroyed or milled, <laughs> we see it flipped. Let's go. Yes. Yeah, he would he would lose it. Alright, so Barong's effect activates and uh yeah, go and search Grunix. Seems good. Viper's got two back row, which uh, makes him a little safer. That gives him a cushion at least, but oh man, this is gonna hurt. So Fire King Island, the uh the Grunix into the grave. So that boy is uh is live. And he's sitting on a heavy infantry and attack, so depending on what the backer is, he could get in for a hit here. Basically the equivalent of a of a direct attack. TJ is the only staple that is currently mostly seen on fire chickens. Um I see a lot of Book of Moon too. That one's a pretty common pick, but yeah, TTH is one I see often. And they can get away with destroying their own monsters with it, so. It's good even if you're only removing one of your opponent's monsters because you just blow up your chicken. Alright, he's going to go for it. Swinging in on the heavy infantry. We have a delay. Hmm, what is the back row? Book of Money, perhaps? Any substitute for Book of Moon? Uh, <laughs> uh, Kanadia? I mean, <laughs> uh, even though that one's not much cheaper. At least it's relatively obtainable. <laughs> Alright, there there is a delay. So we're waiting to see if Viper's going to flip a back row or not to try and uh, save himself from this here. I don't know. I mean... Hmm. Okay, no, he's going to let it through. Let the heavy imagery go to the grave. Ah, uh, yeah, offerings isn't bad either. Yeah, good point. I always just say Kanadia since that's the closest thing to it, but yeah. Alright, we have a Grunix. Is he gonna negate it and hold on to it? I guess that I guess that'll tell us what's uh what's hanging out in his hand. Grunix effect. And I, does he have another Barong in hand? I think he, mm, he does. Yeah, he searched it off of the Fire King Island. He does have a Barong, so he could blow it up. If he wants to hold on to Grunix for another turn, see how this turn goes down. No, he will not. He's going to let the Grunix hit play. All right. So uh, Arvada will activate in the grave to pull out my man Barong. And uh, that Deep Sea Diva is uh, it's more than six feet under, bro. Yeah, it definitely is. I mean, at least I think you can get away with it in Fire Kings if you've got Island up, since you can just go get a card out of your deck with it. But the draw plus the Island search is what helps make them strong. It helps keep their pace up for sure. All right, Chain, let's go. We are stacking the deck. Illegal, illegal, police, police. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can get away with offerings, but it's a toss-up. Those are, those are the sacrifices you have to make. Either you sacrifice your cash money to Konami to get Book of Moon, or you give up the uh, the versatility and the speed of Book of Moon. All right, Barong effect in the grave. He's going to grab a circle. Oh, okay, okay. Grab and circle the Fire Kings. You can blow up one of your own fire monsters and summon another fire monster from the grave. Use the power of the baby chicken to set your board up even more. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> hmm. Four cards in hand, too. Bianca's doing all right. It's four cards in hand versus three in the back row. I feel like the three in the back row is more deadly, but we'll see. Maybe surprise true nade out of nowhere. <laughs> I know it's not going to happen, but it would be kind of crazy. Because I destroyed my own monster and pass turn to win. Got him. Absolutely bodied. Alright, so we're summoning Barong. Off of uh, destroying Arvada from the Fire King Island to search for an Arvada. Grabs 
uh, summons a Barong and then hard summons a Barong. Let's go. All right, they both have pretty pretty filled up boards here. Biakia has the the monsters, but Viper has the has the back row, so we'll have to see if Biakia can actually get through for anything here. All right, first up, Garunix into Gishki Chain. Mmm. I mean, what's he got in grave? Deep Sea and Heavy Infantry? Oh, man. Okay. Oh, Fiendish Chain. Hey, my trump card. Let's go. All right, so he's going to chain up the Garunix. It can't attack, and effects can't be activated. So that uh, that is a, a grounded bird at the moment. But he's going to swing in with Brong as well. Are we continuing the back row? The flips. Let's go. He is TTH flips. Let's go. All right, so he's going to blow up the, the Barongs. And that looks like uh, that looks like a couple of uh, Barong-looking boys going to activate. Because, yeah, during the next standby phase, at this card was by card effect and sent to the grave. Add a Fire King from your deck to hand. Oh, he's got the circle. All right. So he's going to destroy the chicken and summon Narvada. And that is pretty smart because uh, this is still draw phase. He should be able to activate Barongs twice. So he's going to get some uh, some good old fodder. Oh, yeah. And he can... <laughs> Let's go. So he should be able to search two times, I believe. Unless it's once per turn. And I just don't know that. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. Should be able to. Let's go. Are we searching? Byakuya has turned this into... This This duel has just become communism because now it's our turn. <laughs> because this is Viper's turn. <laughs> Keep in mind. Okay, so uh, he is going to summon back uh, the Garunix negate with the Arvada. And now we get some Fire King card searches. Grabs Onslaught. And? And? Byakuya has done a, a stellar job of keeping his hand filled up, keeping stuff ready to go. He's had lots of contingencies, plenty of outs. Oh, the Necro Valley! Oh no, dude! Viper is uh, is down on, on cards and card advantage, but like <laughs> he just keeps volleying up plays to stop Byakuya. It's a battle of... I keep drawing the one card I need to stop you, or keep flipping the back here I need to stop you, and then Byakuya just drawing more cards. <laughs> it's an even match. I mean, it is super back and forth. We're already turn seven here. All right, no Garunix because of Necro Valley. Oh, man. Um, does he have a way to play around it? I mean, he could just unga bunga his way through. Yeah, summon Arvada. Maybe an overlay? He could do a Malevolent Sin here. No, he's not going to do it. We just swing it in. One, vi one back row left on Viper's Field. One chance to save himself. And uh, TTH ain't going to work. So, Oh, he's got the Lance, though. Forbidden Lance. Make uh, Arvada just a little bit smaller to stop him from getting over. And uh, yeah, Viper's going to end this turn with no monsters and no back row. One top deck. What's he got? Does he have a way to turn it around? No, he doesn't. Arvada on board. Byakuya is going to swap out for a new Fire King Island to wipe his board. And I, I'm pretty sure we are looking at the end of this duel. I'm quite positive. Unless there's just some wild round boy in Viper's hand out of nowhere. I would kind of lose it. <laughs> it would be great. Hmm. The Necro Valley, ah, man, it kind of came too late. It came just a little too late. Fire King looking impressive. They're they're making a solid statement in this war now, because uh, this would be Biakio's third win in a row. And even if he lost the next two duels, he would be the first to end on a uh, positive record. So already putting in work for YGL. I've seen I've seen Byakuya win quite a few duels in, in the few matches I've casted with them, so I'm not surprised. All right, Barong swinging in. No lethal yet. 100 life points left and two cards in hand. If he flips a D.Va, this could be trouble. 
Ooh, heavy infantry. And he's got the marksman, so we're gonna get an overlay. Oh no, this is bad. This is really bad. Byaki has three cards in hand. He's got a sphere in grave, and I saw a veil in grave as well. He needs some kind of, uh... He, he needs something, I mean. Okay, he does have a round boy. Sphere Karibo saves the day. Oh, the hand trap just in time for Byakuya, and now uh, he just needs to summon a monster. That's all he needs. Look, try his build with Mirror Wall. That helps force D draw and grab MST. Oh my god. That's hilarious. I don't think I've seen that build. Alright, Fire King Island. Continuing to thin out the deck, which, yeah, makes sense. It's a it's a large boy. Oh, he's going to destroy the Barong. Really? Book of Moon to flip uh, the Dweller face down. Oh, wait. <laughs> Activate Onslaught. Special summon the chicken. Funny chicken, bro. All right. And now, does he have two live Garunixes in Grave, I believe? That was kind of a complicated turn, but wait, he's got Necro Valley! Wait, what is going on? Why he do this? I'm confused. I don't know what's in his hand still. It must be just being a hundred hand traps. Set one pass. This duel's not over. And despite uh, Byakuya playing the bigger deck, he's actually lower on cards. Okay, special summon. One winged... Beast. There's only one in the deck. <laughs> oh no, that's it. He's going to Garunix pass. So now it's just a matter of does Viper top deck something to keep him alive? Uh, pass turn. I think, I think this is, I know I said that a couple turns ago and was wrong, but this is turn 15. And yeah, that is game. Nothing left. Ran out of answers, and Byakuya will take win number three in this war. And now YGL officially takes the lead for the first time in this match. I mean, Byakuya putting in the work so far. <laughs> Look, the Abyss, take out the Brong, wanted to get rid of Abyss, admit not having a front board. If he doesn't, Abyss takes out the monster. Ah, uh, okay, that's fair. Oop. Very fair. It was a little, it was a little too big brain for me. <laughs> I try to follow it as best as I can, but I mean, that just shows you the caliber of competition. Like they, they far outpace me and I'm funny streamer, man. <laughs> they are way beyond, way beyond my level. All right. So now uh, we're waiting on uh, maybe a repeat, perhaps. Do they want to repeat? No. Yes. No. Maybe so. I haven't heard anything yet, so they just haven't started. Let me update numbers while we do this. So that means Viper is zero and one. And Byakuya goes to three and oh. Whew. He's doing the heavy lifting at the moment. My man gonna need a chiropractor after this is done uh okay it does look like divine is gonna repeat here uh they called for it in chat so yep they are repeating let me where's the repeat okay so now both teams have used up one repeat and uh we are going back into it so let's go we're trying uh water one more time yeah, I think that's smart because uh, the Necro Valley came too late, but it did give them the information that, that Byakuya may or may not have a way around it. He may be able to sideboard into it, but he does. it is a 30-card deck, so he either has to hope and pray that the answer comes quick or that Byakuya, or uh, that uh, Viper gets forced into activating Destiny Draw. But we'll see. I mean, if you throw down a Necro Valley and an, uh, and like an Abyss, I mean, it's it's devastating for Fire Kings. It's really hard to get out of. All right, Arvada first. The uh, the classic play. Make sure Elephant on your board. 
All right, Necro Valley, turn one. There it is. So now, uh, now we see how Byakia plays around this. Right out of the gate. Two heavy infantries. Oh, boy. Territory of the Sharks to make them level fours. Let's go overlay into the abyss. And this is a heck of a start for Viper. This is exactly what Divine wanted on the repeat. They really, really wanted to see this come out. So YGL's first repeat was a little bit, you know, hit and miss. But their Divine's repeat is looking solid right now. So, yeah, I think they're feeling pretty happy about it, too. For sure. <laughs> All right. He's got the Necro and the Abyss, dude. Oh, that is, whew, that's hard to play around. I have no idea how to get out of this mess. I mean, can probably clear Abyss, maybe, but the Necro Valley, man, that's, that's going to cause problems. And Byakuya passes. No plays. Now that this is all Viper's duel to win. And maybe put a stop to this Fire King win streak that's been going on. They're, they're up to three wins already. Oh, man. All right, what do we got? Do we have lethal? We do. He's got the lethal on board. Uh, that's not to say that Byaku doesn't have hand traps, but now he's, he's going to be forced to start throwing them around. So I guess now the question becomes, do you activate the destiny draw and let him get it out of this? I say no. I say you wait until you have a guaranteed way to win this. Oh, dire wolf. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Swinging in 1900. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Yeah. Veil's effect. Marksman's effect and Veil's effect. So, uh, yeah, he's going to special summon off of the Marksman effect. Whenever it inflicts damage, you can special summon a level 4 lower Atlantean. And he's going to summon the Attack Squad. Alright, Abyss Dweller's effect, Graveyard effects are uh, offline. And, uh, yeah, he's going to do it to blow up the Veil and clear the way. Now, 2200 and one more attack will do it. And that's it! Finally, the Fire King win streak is ended and Viper picks up a win for Divine. Just as quickly as YGL was about to start pulling away, Viper pulled them back, said, hold on, you ain't going anywhere yet. So that replay was super strong. Delay on the beast attack. I kind of thought so too. I right, said, so now Viper will be uh, one and one. Finally shuts down the Fire Kings. And I don't think we're going to see a repeat on this. I don't think so. It seems too early to pop the other replay. Unless they really want to... No, they're not going to. They're going to go for it. Alright, let's go. We're on to game number seven. And uh, Blue Eyes is here. The man, the myth, the legend himself has arrived. All my Blue Eyes fans and or haters out there. Let's go. All right. So, Byakuya goes into Blue Eyes. And I do recall him playing Blue Eyes and doing pretty well with it. But that was before the ban list. So, I'm curious of how different this may or may not look. I'm a Blue Eyes hater. Understandable. I, Disturbia, I don't think you're the only one. <laughs> 22 cards. Yeah, I was about to point this out. That's kind of poggy. We have 22 cards. And uh, alternative first. Let's go. Alternative one time? And the Sage. Okay, so we're ready for some Synchro, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know what the extra couple cards are for. I don't I don't remember if he played more than 20 cards last time I saw Byakuya play. Because I, this is the third match I've seen with YGL. The first one had Byakuya, and I don't think the second one did. So it's been a while. I've slept since then. Alright, but we are getting a Spirit Dragon on turn one. Hollow Life Blue Eye? Mmm, yeah, maybe. I've seen it a couple times. Alright, so Byakuya ends on the Spirit in one back row, so mm, not, not bad. No eggs in the graveyard yet, but he does have one in hand that he searched off of uh, the Sage. So, I mean, 
Could be better, could be worse. Hmm, okay. So, now what does Viper want to do? We haven't seen anything different. Uh, both teams so far have been playing the same decks they played in their last matches. Uh, Divine played against Sensei last, and they played uh, Fire King, Bued, Harpy, Trimid, Water Xyz, and Thundra. And YGL played against uh, Shadow Games Links, which I casted. Uh, and they played Bued, Sidra, Fire King, Triamid, TG, Thunder Dragon, Water Xyz, and Harpy. So, so far, we haven't seen anything new from both sides, necessarily. Alright, so we have Marksman into D.Va. Divine Wrath on the D.Va. So no D.Va special summon, and it will go to the graveyard. Man, Divine Wrath been coming in clutch a lot lately for Blue Eyes players. I've seen it flipped so many times. So, yeah. That is, uh, once again, Viper is, is stuck. The D.Va is gone, and he's only on a Marksman. With only one back row, too. Ooh. This is a little rough. We've already got a Dragon Spirit of White to get rid of the back row. Oh, this is really bad. And this marks... Or the, the Heavy Infantry is as good as a direct attack. So, this may be game. Byakuya may have lost, but he, he shook it off really quick. Oh, my God. And he's going for the Spirit Dragon float out, too. Ooh, boy. And that is a TTH gone. No chance to activate. Since he did all that at the end of Viper's turn. And now this thing is all Biakio's game to win right here. So uh, YGL may be taking the lead back. Because I don't think there's any way Viper can stop this. Oh man, he's going to cycle the alternative back too. Oh my god. He said, I'm going to play this hand out. I'm not just going to go for the win. I'm going to go all out right now. Yeah. So, Dragon Spirit of White, Azure, and Alternative all online. Let's go. Swing in for game. Because I, I just I don't see any way out of this mess. Yeet. All right, 3,000, and then one more direct attack will seal the deal from one hell of a strong board presence from Byakuya. Yeah, that is, a, that is a sheesh from me. That's a sheesh. So Byakuya picks up YGL's fourth win in this war, and uh, Viper is now knocked out. So, yeah, that repeat. <laughs> that repeat, bro. That repeat is coming in clutch. Okay. Uh, sorry. One second. Uh, okay. Yeah, we're waiting on the next player. I thought they already got him. <laughs> I was like, dang, that was fast. Okay. Uh, so Biakio is still alive. And now, uh, now it's up to Divine. Who are they sending out next? YGL about to change their name to Byakuya and the boys, bro. I do remember Byakuya getting the scoliosis during the last time I saw him play. So, again, this doesn't come as too much of a surprise. So, Viper comes up with a 1-2 and two record to end the day. Hmm, okay. And Byakuya's record goes to 4-1. and one. Yowza. Byakuya sounds like Byakugan. Ooh. Do kind of sound that way. That's Naruto, right? <laughs> My anime knowledge is low, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> or it could be Bakugan. Like that one game with the marbles. Bro, where is where is Bakugan links? Come on. Whatever company. I was going to say Konami, but that's not them. Please give me... Bakugan links, bro. Hmm. Okay, so now we're waiting on uh, the next player from Divine. They're not here yet. Uh, yeah, actually, both teams lost their last matches, so they're they're both coming in with no momentum here. Uh, Divine lost three to ten against Sensei, and YGL lost a really close eight to ten versus SGL. I was very fortunate to be able to to host that one and it was a banger of a match 
And uh, so far, we've been trading lead back and forth. Nobody has uh, leapt out ahead. I did see some results come in. Uh, yeah, <laughs> interestingly, Sensei and SGL just finished their match against each other. And uh, Sensei defeated SGL 10 to 2. So <laughs> they kind of they kind of went in. They kind of went in. And then uh, let's see. There's some other match results, too. Uh, Sun Clan defeated Abusement Park 10 to 9. So that's a full 19. Let's go. OK, here we go. We're going back in. Let's see, yeah. Uh, and then Forbidden Memories beat Bricks and Potatoes 10 to 7. So, yeah, a couple of close matches so far. All right, we have Yami once again, and this is Bahu. Uh, Bahu 2. Let me put in the name. Nice. Okay. So we have Yami. So, uh, probably Fire King again, I would imagine. Let's go. Hey, Tanky, one time. All right. Tanky is first. That's how you started. There's my back row. Bet. There you go. There's the answer we were looking for. <laughs> All right. Oh, we have Yosinju. Oh, so this is new. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Divine did not play Yosinju last time. So, uh, Yosinju, comma, one special summon from hand and Izna as well. Basically, uh, the yo part of their name fits very well because it's all about special summoning a bunch of stuff to your board and then picking it all up at the end of turn. And with Tanky, they've been doing some crazy work. I've seen some nutty Yosinju plays. So I'm hoping we get to see some of that here. I don't think I've seen them fight Blue Eyes, so I'm curious how this matchup works out for them. But, yeah, we'll have to wait and see because... This is just Byakuya's first turn. Cards of Consonance, the one back row. Dang, the Cards of Consonance, egg discard on turn two is sad. It's a nice turn one, but it, it does feel a little slow on turn two, so. All right, let's go. Here's your boy, the vanilla, the OG himself. And two back row, so eh, that's not bad. He's He's got some uh, some defense at least. All right, here we go. Comma one first. Oh, is this a... Yeah, so, okay. Normal summon, comma one. And then you can normal summon another Yosinju from your hand. So he's going to summon the three. Which lets him summon another Yosinju. And he's going to end on the Izna. And, uh, yeah, these, uh, these... Fellers will all be coming back to Bahu's hand at the end of the turn. So... You won't see them for long, unless he overlays into them, obviously. Ooh, Raigeki Break. All right, discard a card. Destroy one card on the board. What are we hitting? He discards Dragon Spirit of White, which, eh, that's fine. Hopefully the backer isn't much. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Well, he's got a lot of targets. I mean, Tanky, it doesn't really matter. It's done its job at this point. The 100, the 100 boost isn't really enough to make it super threatening. So now the question is, which one do you hit? Hmm. Maybe the, maybe the Izna or one of the, I mean, if you hit one or three, the other one's still there and it's just going to come back next turn. Okay. He's going to hit one. Interesting. All right. Yeah. You'll send you comma one is down. Boost means everything. It defined them. Love Mao. <laughs> I mean, if you have like three tankies out, then yeah, there's cut. It's like, okay, now I need to do something about it. But and the 100 is not not dire enough for your Raigeki break. <laughs> All right. So Bahu is just going to bring him back to his hand and pass for now. No way to get around blue eyes yet. And that does seem like the the weak spot that i noticed was it kind of looks like against blue eyes they don't have they can summon a lot and do some pretty funny exceed stuff but like in terms of numbers I, I think blue eyes has the advantage there so that, that's why i was interested in this matchup because they may have some trouble 
All right, Dragon Spirit of White. So Byakuya is going after the back row. And oh my god. Okay, there we go. Yosinju Sword Sting. So if you don't have any monsters, as long as you got two Yosinjus in your hand, you can start just uh, returning cards from your opponent's board to their hand. So uh, he is going to just reset the board, basically. Put uh, put them boys back into Byakuya's hand. And uh, yeah. He's going to set up the ultimate dragons, though. I was about to ask. I was like, I mean, I guess you had no choice because it was use it or lose it. But, like, that kind of just gave him the fusion. Like, oh, my God. Wait, he might have game here. He needs uh, Oyam, the Yosinju hand trap, the big wall guy. Because he can alternative and then he can just ultimate dragons polymerization fuse into the twin burst. Wait. He's doing it! He's doing funny Neo! Neo Blue Eyes! Oh my god, let's go! Alright, Neo is here. He is here to mill the extra deck. Oyam, one time! So, Oyam's effect, uh, you can basically discard Eo, send you, and special summon him. And yeah. Oh, but Byaki was ready! He had the Karma Cut ready to go! He's swinging in! Kyroid! Oh my god! Byakuya can attack three times, so he can get past the Kyroid. Because he's gonna attack again, Kyroid activate, then Neo one more time. But does Bahu have one more hand trap? He needs something else, because Neo is coming strong one more time! No, he has nothing! No way to stop it! Byakuya picks up win number five! What? 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 <laughs> He's picked up five wins! This really is the Byakuya boys! Oh my god! Alright, Bahu, zero and one, Byakuya, five and one! Oh my god! Glass struggles, lots of back row, you send just get a decent amount. They only have one set of kingdom. Do they have a lot of back row? I don't know. Some of the lists I see, like, they only run Sword Sting. Well, mm, no, maybe that's not true. Yeah. Hand traps, two cards of the cards on the field. Josh wins. Get him one more. Yeah. The question was whether or not he had one last. The way he played out the Kite Roid, I kind of thought he did. Sword Sting. Oh, do they run Drowning? Interesting. I haven't played them yet. I'm, I'm building them because I want to, but... Alright. Let's go. Wait. Nope. Not yet. Hold on. Still waiting. Changing decks, I think. So now, YGL pulls away with it a little bit now. They have a two-game lead over Divine. Because uh, Byakuya is just going off in this match right now. Hmm... Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man. Byakuya's had two really strong decks with a lot of really strong openings. Like, it hasn't taken him very long to get online and ready to go in, like, any of the duels we've watched so far. So it's like, oh, man, what do you do? <laughs> like, you can run counters all day long, but, oh, my God. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I think the most I see them run in the back row is uh, Tanky and uh, Sword Sting. Whew. Hold up, just a second. Uh, okay, looks like the it looks like Divine is gonna use their repeat one more time. So they're gonna attempt the Yosinju one more time. So uh, that is Divine's second replay. They have none left now, and YGL still has one to go. And with a game lead, yeah. Seems like they're uh, they're doing all right with the two with the two game lead. I should say. Seems bold. They seem to be confident in it. I'm curious. Because like, yeah, I, I definitely think that their back row hearts blue eyes, but sword sting is really the only problem. But the, the monsters themselves in Yosinju, they, they seem to have trouble hitting 3k numbers. I don't know, maybe they have something up their sleeve that we didn't get to see. 
And Konami server. I cannot get into the match. <laughs> We're stuck on this. Hey, timeout. Hold on. Let's try one more time, yeah? Maybe we'll get to watch this duel at some point. Hey, there we go. All right. So now, uh, Divine's repeats are gone. They are down currently three to five against YGL, against Byakuya and the boys. Since this man has been putting the team on his back so far. Only the second duelist up for YGL. They still have three more duelists waiting in the wings. Bahu opens T-Pose pass. MST stops the Raigeki break. Woo! Alright, Izna. Izna two time. But uh, Izna will let him draw cards. So, maybe not the worst position to be in. And he can overlay with it too. So, yeah, let's go. Going into the Abyss Dweller overlay. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Seems fine to me. So Abyss Dweller for direct for 17, and that's it. Wow, they both started a little scuffed, huh? It's kind of an awkward opening. Maybe Byaki was hoping to start building momentum with the Rageki break. Discard the egg. All right, ultimate drag. Oh, wow, this is a little scuffed. All right, ultimate dragons first. He could just go Neo. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Please do. Oh, my God, do it, you legend. It's gonna happen, isn't it? It's gonna happen. Divine's off to use a secret weapon and has changed their name to Flower Boy. Oh no. Oh no. No, no, no. It's happening! Funny Neo! <laughs> Turn four again! Biakia goes for Neo, dude! Oh my god! He's gonna go for Neo right out of the gate! What? Huh? Oh my heck, dude. Yeah, this is a risky play. This is a real risky play. He is risking it for the biscuit. Let's go to attacks. Neo swinging in first. Oh my god. Alright, Abyss Dweller's effect. Gonna, you know, do the thing. 2800 to the dome. Neo's effect. Mill an extra deck. Okay, now we're going to attacks. He's got to have something, right? At least one hand trap. Okay, Kite Roid. Okay, he's he's alive. He's alive and ready for a destiny draw. Because now Kite Roid is going to have to uh, get banished. So, yeah. Uh, is there resources to make Abyss? Maybe he doesn't have discard. Yeah, that is a question. But now, uh, Bahu is going to have a destiny draw activated. Let's go. Anime cheating hours. It is time for the hacks. Let's go. What we got? What are we rocking with here? Alright, he has chosen the card. And it is comma one. I'm assuming that would be a destiny draw, right? Yeah, comma one to summon the comma two. Are we going to get comma three? One, two, three? I can count to three, bro. Come on. Okay, Izna. Yeah, that's not bad either. More card draw. And overlay, too. So he... Yeah, and he gets to put the Neo back. That has to be GG. How do you recover? How do you recover from losing Neo? Like, what do you do? All three blue eyes are in the grave. He has no eggs ready to go. Oh my god, dude. What do you do? Malevolent Sin, GG. It's over. Pack it up. Byakuya finally, after five wins, an impressive win streak to say the least, finally falls and YGL will have to send up a new duelist because that is GG. Spooder. Spooder win. Yeah, the, the replay this early on with a lot of the war left seems risky, but uh, they, uh, they, yeah. So now Divine picks up a win. Let's go. We're back in the money. And now we're back to just one uh, win separating these two teams. And finally, Byakuya goes down. Good stuff to Divine and Byakuya as well. He put in a lot of work today. Man's got to be exhausted. Because uh, six duels in one war is uh, 
That's a lot. That is a lot. Alright, so now we will wait and see who YGL sends into the fold next. Let's go. He summoned the Spooder. Uh, okay. Oh, Byakuya's record. Rick Hurd. Uh, is 5-2. and two. That is probably one of the highest records I personally have seen. Most of, most of the matches I cast are so darn even. Everybody ends up like 2-2. Two and two. So to see 5 and 2, that's that's solid stuff. He got them halfway to the win. So now we'll wait and see who who is next from YGL. They still have Mellow, Kami and Lightning left. I do I've seen all 3 of them, but I don't remember anything super specific, but my memory is not to be trusted, so it may come back to me slowly over time. Let's see, what have we not seen from YGL yet? I don't think they've played... They played Sidra last week, and uh, we haven't seen that yet, so... Alright, it looks like Mello is coming out next for YGL, and they are... Oh, wow, they jumped right into it. <laughs> that was like... Frame one, start the duel. Let's go. Alright. Oh, hey, speaking of Sidra... <laughs> Kami is in Kami Kira? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, the only thing I have on the roster is just Kami, so... Oh, what? We have balance? On Zane? Nani? Is it Triamid? I was expecting Sidra. It is Triamid! We have a Triamid deck! Wow. Alright, so uh, he starts off with a Fortress and a Dancer first. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I just see Zane and assume it's Cyber style, but no. One back row as well. Hmm. Yeah. Shuffle back cards from graveyard for dancer, but there's none in graveyard yet, so. But you can swap out the field spell, and uh, that is what Trimid does a lot of. They uh they love to play like 14 field spells in one turn, so. Alright, tanky first. Yeah, it's not the best start. It's a little scuffed. Especially when you're staring down a tanky as the first play in uh, Yosenju. And he goes for the three, so I'm s assuming there's the three. Okay. Who's next? One, maybe? Yeah! The one, and then the Izna for the, for the complete. You know, the one, two, three, even though there's not a two on here. There you go. Izna, comma three, comma one. So, uh, Bahu's gonna draw some more cards, and, uh, he has plenty of, uh, of materials for some Xyz if he wants to. Oh, no, he doesn't! TTH! Yeah, treacherous. Blow some stuff up. Yeah. Yeah, the, the TTH senses. So, comma one and three are going to the grave, and, uh, Izna is, uh, the last, the last Yosenju standing here. Bahu's got two back row. Are we gonna see? Are we gonna see the one card sword sting? The one card sword sting? No need. And yeah, he's gonna swap out the field spell for the cruiser. Gain some life points every time you summon a rock. When you summon Dwayne Johnson, you gain 500 life points. We're gonna stall some trying to boost. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think YGL had the the big IQ plays here. All right, King Golem, let's go. So uh, everybody gets boosted. Yeah, there is no OM right now. No, because he pulled Isna back to his hand. So that's the one card he's got. Hmm. And as far as I know, Mello doesn't have Sphinx yet, but doesn't look like he needs it. Alright, Master in hand. Yeet. And that's off of Cruiser's effect. So summon the Master. That's a 2300. That's a big boy. He's a hefty boy. So. Oh. Oh, I thought he was going to do it. Okay. Yeah, so he's going to shuffle one back into deck and boost even more. Oh, he's going to go for it. 
I think he's going for it. Let's go. Swing in. Do it, bro. Do it, you legend. Yeah, because he's, what, 44? I'm bad at math, but... Uh... Sword Sting, perhaps, maybe? <laughs> that would help. I mean, <laughs> he could just flip TTH2 if he wanted to. Okay, yeah. Sword Sting. The one card Sword Sting. To send the Dancer back to hand. So, uh, he won't die this turn. I mean, I guess he could always double Sword Sting? No. Alright. Mello passes. Doesn't want to activate Destiny Draw. Seems reasonable. Let's go. Two cards in hand. Gotta make some stuff happen here, because he knows he's staring down lethal next turn again. Maybe even more. <laughs> He's got an Isna and an unknown card. Triple Dog Daria. Oh, okay. So he has an. E so he's still just got one Isna. And then swap out the field spell. Go over to the cruiser for the life point gain. And also the card draw stuff, too. And then special summon the dancer back. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I think there's going to be even even more damage on Mello's board now. Go over to King Olam, Cruiser's Effect, yeah. Add a Triamid card. Or, sorry, a Triamid Monster, specifically. Should have clarified that. Adds another Master. Oh, no, dude. Oh, no. This is not good. This is not good. I'm assuming it's just going to be, yeah, just double master, bro. Uh, this is not the board you want to be staring down. Dancer effect, send one back to the deck to boost him up again. And now Mello has super lethal. Yeah, master's effect. Oh, is he going to swap the field spell again? Oh my god, my man Mello been going through. Oh yeah, 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 he's going to blow up the back row. Oh! Oh no! He hit the drowning, bro. No drowning one time. Oh my god. Mello. <laughs> Beaten down on the man. He has an MST, but that's it. And an Isna in hand. That's game. He cannot survive this. There's no way. Mello picks it up. Continuing YGL's lead in this war. Oh my god. He really did it to him. He did it to him, dude. And that is Bahu down. Yosinju's fall. And YGL will go to six wins. Been useless anyway. Yeah, there was just nothing he could do. Oh. Oh, Worm. Well, there you go. Alright, so. Bahu will end on a one and two record. Damn. Damn. Oh, yes, Sumi. <laughs> Good night. Good night. All right, so who's next? Divine has to pull somebody else out. Who is it going to be this time? They still have uh, Harry and Me Maker. Who they got? Who they sending? Um. Okay, why? Why GL did play Triamid in their last match? Both teams did. So not surprising necessarily. My anime addiction coming in handy. Bet. Got to get some of that Japanese practice in, bro. <laughs> uh, let's go. All right, so um, let's see. What has Divine not played yet that they played last time? I think they've almost played everything now. I, I believe. I can't 100% say, but I think 
Last time in their match against Sensei, they played Fire King, Bude, Harpy, Triamid, Water Exceeds, and Thundra. Dang it, normally I <laughs> I keep track of these. I usually write it down, but I haven't been this time. So now we wait. We play the waiting game of whoever comes next. I know I have two left, so it's kind of a coin toss at this point. Dies <laughs> over. Mm. I haven't seen anything yet. No, nothing yet. I don't know who I don't know who they're sending. Stand by. We're waiting. Let's see, are there any more results that I haven't that, that we haven't seen yet? Match results, where are they at though? Match results, let's see. Okay, yeah, one did come in. Uh, Switcheroo beats SEM 10 to 9. Oh my god. There's been two 10 to 9 wars this weekend. That just goes to show you how close things are. This is the last week of regular play. We're starting playoffs next. And a lot of teams are right on the edge. So, oh, hey, what's up? Yo, hello, everybody. <laughs> How's it going? We're watching this match. <laughs> hey, thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, Team Wars, as well, for uh, for the big boy raid. So, yeah, we are watching a match between YGL and Divine. Uh, Divine is now sending up a new duelist. We're just waiting on who comes next. Uh, but uh, YGL is holding on. They've uh, held on to a two-game lead for a while now. So, um, yeah, they're uh, they're one of the many teams this weekend that uh, really needs to pick up a win because they're kind of on the edge of making it into playoffs. This is kind of a very tense weekend since there's so many teams. Like, um, in the Dragon Reign division alone, like seven of the eight teams have the potential to get in. Because almost all the teams, except for the first place team, have records of 5 and 4, 4 and 5, or 3 and 6. So, yeah, every match is very, very important. So now we, we wait and see <laughs> who is uh, who is coming next. Because I haven't seen anybody yet, so. No levy, no win. <laughs> Understandable. Yo, thank you for the follow, levy. Welcome. Alright, uh, so it looks like Harry is coming up next for Divine. Let me update. I have to do my job. Harry. There we go. Alright, and uh, yeah, we got some blue eyes. Oh, okay. We did see Biakio from YGL play blue eyes and uh, go on an absolute tear. Man, ended on 5-2. and two. So he, uh, he kept... <laughs> he kept YGL in this match single-handedly for a long time. So we have Blue Eyes versus Triamid, and Mello opens with a King Olam first. And a Master on board in a back row. It's a little better. It's a little better. Not a, not a scuffed. As Mello had a somewhat rough start last duel, but came around and, and uh, won anyway. So yeah, I'll take a 2300 Master on turn one. Why not? All right, Alternative Dragon coming up first. On, uh, on Harry's side, the first card he plays. Yeah, seems good. And we did see uh, Funny Neo earlier. We saw two Funny Neos earlier. So I hope that we get more memes in this match. Because uh, I do enjoy some good Neo. Alright, uh, Master's Effect to swap out the field spell. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not skilled in Triamid, so I can't pretend like I have ESP in no. So he's going into Fortress. Yeah, can't be destroyed by card effects, so he's going to stop the alternative in its tracks, but it's an alternative still. It's just a really big monster. <laughs> like, it's hard to it's hard to be disappointed in having a 3k monster against 1800. And then, yeah, the King Olam effect. Special summon another Triamid. Oh, he's got the Sphinx! He special summoned the Sphinx off the King Olam effect! Bro, are you for real right now? Did this really just happen? He summoned the, the Sphinx. Oh my god, yes. Hey, Megamind, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I thought he missed the special summon. I was like, wait, did he not do it? But no, he summons the Sphinx off of it, bro. All right. 
Okay, we're going for a synchro. Let's go. That's that's fine. Yeah, going to spirit. The normal play. The normal. <laughs> normally. <laughs> normally. I don't see it come out that fast. And on the opponent's turn. He summoned it on Harry's turn. He summoned it on his turn. He said, hey, here's what I'm bringing next turn. What you got? Play your best. And this is the this is the defense buff, so he can easily swap out to uh to a King Olam and start buffing up the attack. Like, who cares about Azure's effect when you can literally just punch over it anyway? I mean Okay, uh ends on a dragon spirit of white, so he is gonna uh oh yeah, he's gonna sweep the field spell out from under Mello's feet. So yeah, that uh oof, that hurts. All right, let's go. In before he top decks it. Top decks King Olam. Let's go. Or any field spell. That's that's what he needs. <laughs> because then he just starts beating over Blue Eyes and it, it just doesn't matter. But if he doesn't have it... No, he doesn't. He's got the back row. He's going to have to play the long game. Uh. All right, all right, all right. So, Harry's got one egg in grave and alternative. Oh, yeah, he's going to just turtle up. Mellow switching uh, the master to defense. Yeah, the Dragon Spirit of White knocking out the field spell definitely hurts. And he had already used master, so he couldn't just do it. <laughs> Otherwise, you know he would have. To go right back into King Olam to get that nice attack point boost, the little 500 bonus points. <sighs> okay. End of turn. Oh, I assume this is whether Harry wants to float out, maybe? If he wants to float Spirit into Azure? Hmm. I mean, on the plus. Well, <sighs> he's got alternative in the grave. I was about to say. <laughs> on the plus side, they're even at 3,000 each, but. We'll have to see. Melo's got two back rows. So I'm assuming he has some kind of out. Try mid pulse. Yeah, there could be a pulse. All right, Azure. He may that may have been the top deck. I'm not sure. Because he did set his only plays were set one and uh, move master into defense position. So he may have it in the back row now. But I'm I can't confidently say that. But he might. All right, egg. Cycle the boy. The alternative. Needs more engraved. Yeah, I was about to say, it's only got one engrave. I don't think it's... Oh, man, this is not a good place to be in. But two back row. He may, ha he may have an option to protect himself. All right, alternative uh, one more time. Uh, yeah, and I... Uh... Uh, wait! What? He played Burst Stream of Destruction! Activates Burst Stream of Destruction. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls. What? He's gonna board wipe and then <laughs> exceeds into Heliopolis. Oh my god. Yeah, so he does it to get rid of the alternative because its name is considered Blue Eyes and uh, Burst Stream is not able to destroy. So there we go. There's a Trimid Pulse. And he does have three in, in Grave, but only one field spell, so... Yeah, he can at least uh, summon, right? Yeah, banish two cards to special summon, and he is going to special summon, I believe. No, he's going to destroy the Heliopolis. Okay, okay, that's fair. But he's got ultimate dragons ready to go, too! No! <laughs> he's ready, dude! He came prepared! That was kind of clutch! I didn't expect to see Burst Stream of Destruction. All right, Twin Burst. No funny Neo this time, but that uh, that could be lethal. Bro, that's kind of wild. All right, uh, can't even TTH. No, he cannot. He is locked out of TTH because Azure was active, and that is the game. Harry wins it, dude. And that is uh, Mello's first loss. Burst Stream of Destruction! What? 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 <laughs> what? 
All right. So yeah, this is uh this uh, they need to to start mounting the comeback here. Hey, Karu, thanks for the five months, dude. Thank you so much. All right, let's go. Divine is now uh, five to six. They're uh, trying to close this gap. They've been trying for a while. That is very spicy. And now, uh, for all of you Blue Eyes fans out there, um, this this may be your your wet dreams for the past like seven or eight months. We have Blue Eyes versus Blue Eyes. Hey, FNX Fox, thank you for the follow as well. Welcome, hello. All right, and uh, that is uh, Mellow is one and one. I forgot to update. I'm sorry. Records. Wait, I did. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong. <laughs> Bro, I don't even know how to do my job. Please fire me. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. Mellow's one and one. Just fire me. <laughs> Alright, anyway. Uh... I'm I'm still attempting to recover from that uh, burst stream. Wait a minute, he's got Maiden, Maiden with Eyes of Blue, <laughs> bro. Harry's deck has some wild stuff in it. He's got the Maiden, bro. All right, Mello goes for the classic, the uh, the egg, I, I, White Stone of Ancients. I always call it egg. I should make that more clear. <laughs> White Stone of Ancients. Then he cracks the egg in the pan with the Sage. Goes and grabs the Dragon Spirit to go after the back row. Yeah, Harry has a lot of spice. That's a lot of spice. I mean, it worked out for him. It worked out just fine last time. Stay spicy, my dude. Stay spicy. <laughs> I'm pretty shocked. Like, you know, as much as I don't, like, get too hype about Blue Eyes matches, except for Funny Neo, like, it's pretty interesting to see some, some crazy stuff. Alright, so uh, special summon the blue eyes at the end of his turn, and now we're back over to Harry, and he's got uh, Maiden. Excuse me? What is happening? Mausoleum of Light! Bro! Bro! He's got Mausoleum! Oh my heck, dude. Alright, Mausoleum targeting Maiden for the Maiden effect? To special summon blue eyes off of Mausoleum Maiden? Yeah, this is old school blue eyes. This is the old school, bro. We out here. Oh my god. Alright. Absolute legend, dude. Oh my god. Kind of nutty combo. Alright, so he uses the Mausoleum of White skill on Maiden, then uses the Maiden to special summon, now into Spirit. Oh boy. Yeah, he, he skipped out on the new blue eyes. He said, bro, who needs that? Not me. Not if Bro, he hasn't been affected in several ban lists. Burst Stream of Destruction, Maiden, Mausoleum. Bro, this really do be like 2018. It's wild out here. I didn't know I flipped Time Machine in my back row. Oh, Jesus. All right. Floating out the spirit. Summon another blue eyes. Let's go. And now we poly. Funny Neo? Do it. Do it. Oh no, he might actually do it. He's doing it! He's doing it! Oh my god! So much Neo this war! I love it! Oh my god! Funny Neo! And uh, I think that's gonna be game! I think Melo takes it with Neo here! I don't think there's anything Harry can do, right? I don't think Mausoleum saves him. Spirit to float out? What? He went into Stardust Spark! Stardust Spark! Oh my god! He can stop himself from being destroyed by battle once per turn. But he needs something else, right? Because Neo can attack three times! Neo can attack three times! Stardust can only activate once! He needs another hand trap! No! He's got nothing else! The mans does not get away with it anymore! The crazy plays are over! We're done with that one. We're done with that. Whoo! Oh my god, funny Neo, bruh. And now YGL continues to hang on to that two win lead. Oh my god, I need it. Hold on, can we get a timeout or something? Oh, they're going right back in, too. They ain't wasting no time. Oh. <laughs> Can I get a nap, please? Can I get a nap? <laughs>
Oh my god. All right. Funny Neo, bro. What else has Harry got? Wait! Oh wait! He went for balance on my man Sartorius. Jacob Sartorius? Old school blue eyes. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. Right? <laughs> right? Oh my heck. Alright, so Harry's now down to one and one. They're both on their last deck. And Mello uh, goes to two and one. Damn. Alright, T pose pass from Mello. I guess try him mid because balance. Right? <laughs> I see Sartorius and I just have flashbacks of Desperado, but okay. Yeah. Sartorius try him mid. Okay. <laughs> I was kind of like, uh oh. All right, King Olam into Fortress right away. Dancer and one back row. Oh boy, okay. So, uh, Fortress, Dancer, back row pass. Ouch. Kind of scuffed. Versus a T-pose. Old school blue eyes. That's not at all what I was expecting to see tonight. That's a little wild. All right. Oh, he has the egg. Let's go. Flips White Stone of Ancients up. Oh, are they gonna clash? Let's go! Yeah, Dancer, he'll swap out the field spell before it uh before they crash. <laughs> I still can't get over that. That's gonna take me some time. So yeah, he'll swap it out before they crash and save himself. But uh I mean either way, I feel like that's kinda what Mello wanted. So yeah, Dragon Spirit of White, and uh, I assume targeting the King Olam probably? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm, maybe this is a pulse in uh, in Harry's back row? Could be. Hmm, it's hard to say. There's a good chance of it though. Alright, Dancer. Shuffle back a tri mid card, and uh, gain 500 attack. Oh, he had the fortress anyway. He had the extra field spell this time. But a pass. 2,900. Hmm. Well, Mello could always just float out to a blue eyes and punch over it, I suppose. Wait, can he do this on his turn, too? Once per turn, you can target one try mid card and shuffle it. Hmm. Hmm. Just alternative. Just do it. Alternative one time, bro. Oh. All right, let's go. Oh, he flipped Divine Wrath on him. Discards the cards of consonants to Divine Wrath. Ouch. But that's all he's going to do. Nothing else. Divine Wrath pass. Damn. And since it's Fortress, he can't be destroyed by card effects. So, yeah, it's a straight up negate. Then that's it. He dropped cards of consonants. To activate Wrath that didn't get a destroy. Oh man, this is this is kind of weird. They they both kind of misfired here. All right, so okay, this is a White Stone Ancient. All right, all right, all right, that's fine. Oh no, the TTH, bro. The treacherous to wipe out Mellow's board. But uh, yeah, you can always you know put that back, I guess. Fat Dancer, bro. It is kind of thick. The thickness. Cannot bypass the thickness. Alright, Ancient Rules. Oh, yeah, Ancient Rules out the the Dragon Spirit. Yep. Yup. Oh, man. He is really... Oh, he's going to go for the back row this time. Alright. And it is the Pulse. He gets rid of the Pulse. Okay, okay, okay. You cannot change Did he need to do that? I mean... Like I know Pulse is good. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess he's gonna he's gonna be able to get those pretty quick. That's fair. I was about to say he could have always tried to throw a real wrench in it and just get rid of the field spell again, but maybe maybe the pulse hits safer. All right, our turn is done. <laughs> All right, uh, crosses over into the cruiser. Plays cruiser over the cruiser. Wow, that's a downgrade, bro. He went from Prisma to regular. Mm mm. Mm -mm. All right, that's fine. I only meme. 
Okay. Uh, so <laughs> we have another dancer, bro. Dancer strap. What is this duel? <laughs> we went from old school blue eyes to like really weird. Both both sides just have had a weird game so far. Like these dancers are huge, dude. They really are thick. That's kind of wild. That's a 3400 defense dancer. Second dancer search. Uh, dancer's effect activates. Yeah. Oh, divine wrath. And yeah, this time he will get the destroy off, right? Yeah. Because it's not fortress, so he does get a destroy. Oh, it's Sphinx in hand. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> He had the Sphinx in hand, and now Mello has no cards in hand. We are top decking. All right. Let's see it. What you got? I think he has one more egg in grave, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he does. He has one more Ancients in grave. Oh, he's got the Sage. Search for the Ancients. Punish him. Oh, man. All right, so Sage and Blue Eyes. And he, yeah, I was about to say, he does have a cycle, so. He's looping. He needs the loops, brother. Hmm. Okay. So he pulls the alternative back. But the only card in his hand is Egg. Because he searched it off the Sage. So he's holding on to uh, White Stone of Ancients and uh, Alternative. <laughs> hmm. All right, synchro time. Let's go, Spirit Dragon. Dang, I was kind of hoping for Gigantic Castle Thirty One. <laughs> yeah, there's there's no real clear path forward at this point for Mello. Like he's kind of in trouble here. The dancer with the thickness, dude, just continues the thickness. And now that uh, Sphinx is a thirty-five k. All right, Spirit is going to float out, replace with uh, the boy. Oh, no, Negate. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My bad. Yeah, Spirit Dragon Negate in the graveyard. King Olam is game. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's GG. That's it. There's no way out now. The Dancer is too thick. The thick Triamids, dude. Look at these boys. They're so big, dude. Yeah, he's got huge monsters and just absolutely about to go bananas on this board. King Olam swing in, Sphinx swing in for the 4K, the one hit, and that is GG. And Mello is KO'd. Try him in best deck. Let's go. No, nope. well, well, pinned best deck, but you know, try him in pretty good, I guess. We take some try <laughs> All right. Harry goes up to two and one. Seems good to me. For playing blue eyes normally. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so Mello is down. Oh, nope, not that one. This one. So now uh, we will wait on YGL's next member. And they still have uh, Kami and Lightning left. So now the question is, what the heck do you send out? Network issue. No. The networks. Hmm. One sec, we're waiting on the next uh, the next player. Where are the vampire decks to celebrate RE8 release? Bruh. Good question, to be honest. Okay, uh, Lightning is coming out next. <clears throat> Sorry. My voice and brain am not work so good. Alright, let's go. Ooh, maybe we're going to see some harpies? I believe. Wait. That's a thick deck. 25 card. The thickness, bro. The really thick harpies. All right, 25 card harpy. Oh, uh, don't worry. It's not it's not what you think it is. It's Triamid. 
It's not Arcana, it's Triamid. <laughs> Harry won last duel, so he's on the same deck, so. Alright, let's go. We got Perfumer. So, uh, Harvey's Underground blow itself up. It won't be gone for long. Perfumer, go grab a Speller Trap. Elegant Egotist is pretty much the pick most of the time. Eh, Feather Rest is good, too. Alright, so, uh, Summon Harpy Lady 1. Not the original, but number one, I guess. Oh, sorry, let me put the player's name in. You know, do my job. There we go. Okay, Cyber Slash. Oh, no! The board you don't want. The Cyber Slash Pass. Uh, okay. Uh, Fortress first into the Hunter back row. Oh, he's got a couple back row this time. Ooh, extra spice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, he took the risk, I guess, and it kind of paid off, but I am not a fan of Cyber Slash Pass. It's, it's a hard board to play with. But I, it's fine for now. All right, Harpy's Hunting Ground uh, is played, and that will activate uh, Harp Cyber Slash's effect. All right, there you go. Power Sync Stone. We haven't seen this yet in this war, actually, despite the couple of Triamid decks we've seen. Not a, not a bad uh, not a bad idea against Cyber Slash, since it's for every monster effect, and Cyber Slash is going to activate a lot. So, yeah. Just just shut it off. Just turn it off, bro. <laughs> just hit the power button. Ah, but it may not matter. I mean, this could be a TTH. It may not matter. <laughs> Elegant Egotist. Special Summon. The one. Yeah, blow some stuff up. I believe we are done here. I, I think we're done here. I don't really see much of a way out of this. It's a lot of destruction. <laughs> uh, I mean, he has one back row, but TTH is uh, offline, so... Oh my god, he's got a perfume or two. Lightning is gonna is gonna give it to him, bro. Power Sync Stone versus Harvest Hunting Ground. Yeah, that that it's better against uh ties that bind Harpy. But yeah, against uh against Hunting Ground, it does hurt. Oh my god, he's still going. <laughs> he's going into Abyss. Bruh. I don't see I don't see any way out of this. I'm pretty sure this is done. I mean, this seems kind of solved to me. Harpy's feather. He's still going. He's doing it. He's gonna draw two off the Harpy's feather rest. Put three back in deck. Draw two. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Combat. Let's go. Swing in. And he's done. <laughs> Lightning comes up and knocks Harry out. GG. All right, so now uh, Divine will need to send up their last duelist. And YGL holds on. They they get that two-win run back. We take those. Okay, so Harry is down and out. And ends on two and two. Oops, sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, hang on, Tiki. I saw your question. Just a sec. Okay, we're good. We're good. Well, we'll do this because we know who's, what's coming next. There's only one duelist left. So Divine is down to their last player. Uh, so question for the long-term players. Are one-turn or two-turn games fun for you? Do you think it is what it is or are there other thoughts? Um, yeah, I don't really think too much about it. Like, I still enjoy playing the game, and I just know that it's going to happen. I, I agree with, with Orenji. As long as it's not something dumb like head judging, where you just don't really have much control over it, and just kind of lose to a coin toss. I don't really mind. I, I, do, I like games that are very back and forth. That have, you know, usually something involving control and, like, trying to outplay. But 
I can I can enjoy. I mean, <laughs> I play a lot of Photon, and Photon is mostly just unga bunga one turn. But like, I enjoy watching and and talking about like very heavy back and forth kind of matches. <laughs> Put up with a certain percent chance of being RNG, but not when it's a card choice. Uh, I mean, as, as long I mean, literally as long as it's not flip a coin when you activate an effect. If you're right, then you get to keep your monster. If not, I get it and I win. That's what I can't deal with. But if it's like a legitimate combo that you had to put out and set up, I'm fine with it. I don't really have an issue. Personally, at least. I don't I don't I don't think too much of it. I just kind of know that that's how Yu-Gi-Oh is a lot of times. Like there's definitely some decks that require more control and there's plenty of duels that are kind of control versus control. But yeah, it doesn't bother me too much. And yeah, I I would I would say to compound on Orenji's point, a lot of the fight happens in the deck building screen. Especially in a game like Duel Links where you only have 20 cards. So you're going to go through your, well, you know, 20 to 30, whatever, give or take. But you're going to go through your deck a lot faster. And, like, a lot of your match kind of comes down to what you did in the deck edit screen. Which, uh, again, I'm fine with it. I don't know. I never really thought that much about it. Like, I I'm, and, and I'm an old player. Like, I played back in, you know, like the beginning of the game, like Duel Monsters era. So, like, uh, like... As much as I wanted to hold on to the, like, nostalgia of being like, yes, summon my Celtic Guardian. Like, I don't know. I just kind of am like, yeah, this is just what Yu-Gi-Oh is. Like, we just have these crazy combos that sometimes go down to, you know, one turn, two turns. It's an interesting question to ask because I really haven't thought that much about it. All right. It looks like we're almost ready. I think... Uh, I think uh, the meme man is here. Yes, meme man is here at the table. So stand by for just a second. And yeah, this is uh, this is Divine's last player. Meme, meme maker is the last one for Divine. So man's going to have to put up four W's to bring this thing home. The pressure is on and we're going into it. Let's go. All right, Lightning still with two uh, two uh, decks left, so... And then after that, uh, Kami is the last one standing. All right, Harpy's Hunting Ground versus Jesse. I'm assuming this is uh, Ties That Bind, so probably Harpy's. <laughs> I think it's a mirror. I believe. Can't spell Meme Maker without four Ws. <laughs> Uh, Duel Links was Konami's attempt at creating a dam against this kind of meta, now the dam is about it. Yeah, and I think that was always kind of inevitable. Like, Duel Links kind of, when it first came out, it kind of served the same purpose that Rush Duels in Japan serve. Because, like, Rush Duels are, you know, their attempt of trying to get new people into the game and, like, kind of ease them into what Yu-Gi-Oh! has become. And that's kind of what Duel Links is doing, because, you know, we're getting one era at a time, one mechanic at a time. So yeah, I kind of I kind of think that this was going going to happen one way or another. Uh, would it be inaccurate to say you're happy with the mechanics of the game itself because competitive plays rule sets change has some people? Yeah, I like I like the idea that a lot of the battle is mental and it comes down to deck choices and techs and things like that. So yeah, I, no, I, I I think that if if how I'm reading it is what you intend, then yeah, I think so. And yeah, don't worry, it's not spam, my guy. You're putting in legitimate effort to have a discussion. That's not spam. I appreciate it. It's an interesting conversation, because I've never really thought that much about it. Because I have a lot of nostalgia for the old days of the game, but I play Duel Links a ton now. I mean, I have like almost 1k hours in Steam, and like, you know, I, I, I don't know. I just never really thought that much about it. All right, let's go. Hmm. I've seen this mirror a couple times, and I still haven't quite been able to wrap my head around it. The mirror is hard. 
One chaos. Yeah, I played a lot more on mobile when the game first came out. I don't know how long I've played on mobile. All right, let's go. He summons the funny patriarch, bro. The funny patriarch. One <laughs> K hours equals one hundred twenty-five working days. Yeah, it is a lot. I mean, yeah, compared to two thousand hours, it's not, but it's still a lot of hours. Like comparatively, your statement is correct that it's not a lot. But in general, doing something for 1,000 hours is a pretty decent amount. That's like half of a work year. Alright, let's go. So we Oh, he's got the hysteric sign. We didn't even see that yet. Yeah, so you add an elegant egotist to your hand. And then whenever it gets sent to grave during the end phase of the turn it's sent, you can add a bunch of cards from your deck to your hand. I do see it every once in a while. No, did we see Lightning play Oracle? Cause like I've seen the hysteric sign in, in the decks in the in the decks that don't have Oracle in them. So Hey Chris, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Hello. <clears throat> How many hours have I spent on this game? Alright, Heraldry Patriarch. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. So basically the way that this goes down. <laughs> Is uh, it stops lightning from <laughs> summoning monsters. Hey, 2100 Adam, thank you for the follow as well. Hello, welcome. Oh man, oh man, Stark Sign is running the bigger. Yeah, that's fair. That is fair. All right, so funny patriarch. Basically, because all the Harpy cards become the name Harpy Lady, you run Patriarch for the mirror because you basically just blow up all their monsters. Funny Patriarch. Alright, ties that bind. Let's go. We're swinging. We're going to attacks. Lightning's only got one face down. <clears throat> Heraldry 2400. And that's it. Lightning's at 16 with, what, four cards left? Oh, Harpist in grave. Let's go. Uh, side decks always fascinating. I mean, seeing TCGs like Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh! We play on high level. It's not all to simply alternate choices. Yeah. Like, the, the game, there's... I mean, that's what a metagame technically is, but there's a game inside the game, and part of it is is the mental battle of how do you build your deck? What do you prepare for? Because you know you can't prepare for every bad matchup. It's pretty much impossible. For the most part. As a general statement, I'm, I'm sure there will be specific examples, but you really can't prep for every contingency. So you have to figure out what risks are you willing to take when you build a deck, and especially when you play in a side deck format. Which changes up Duel Links a lot, because Duel Links was not built with side decks in mind. Like, that's a community thing. Everyone has Harpy Deck. Yeah, it's, it's one of the top decks at the moment in the post-ban list environment. Oh yeah, I play a lot of Pokemon TCG too. I, I like it a lot. It's it's interesting. It's less interactive, but like it's it's a really interesting game to me. I have I don't play it as much, and I don't understand it as much as I understand Yu-Gi-Oh. Tropical beaches, bruh. <laughs> Heck no. Bro, I ain't got the budget for that. I'm in the Konami freaking casino. Yeet, the perfumer? Let's go. Trunade plus book one time. That would help. That would definitely help him out in this situation. Yes, funny patriarch time. Do it, my guy. Do it. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. What what do you do in this situation? Like he's he's trying. He's trying. Uh He's only going to get one draw off the feather rest too. Bruh. Bruh bruh bruh. All right. He's going for the back row. 
I mean, if he has like a, you know, the book would be fine, but at least Funny Patriarch is out of uh, materials, so. Yo, Vortex would be nice. Does he run it, though? We haven't seen it if he does. Can I make their choices for money making? Using Noble Knights. Uh, I've played a little bit of Noble Knight since the ban, and eh, they're not bad. Okay, Tyce, he's just gonna go for it. We're swinging for the fences. He needs to flip TTH or something, because both of these cards are lethal. No, he's got nothing! No! Meme Maker picking it up, bro. They're not done yet. They're not done yet. Divine trying to close that gap a little more. They're up to seven to eight. Let's go, me man. All right, me maker starts it off one to zero. Looking good. Why are they banned again? They were pretty insanely consistent. <laughs> like I don't, I don't recall many times that I ever saw noble knights not be able to just go off. Consistent and and powerful, like. The, I guess the general idea for trying to balance something that's consistent is make it less powerful and vice versa. But, like, they kind of got both really good. <laughs> so, yeah. There are a lot of people that do not, uh, that do not like Noble Knights. <laughs> like, they're, they're, they're not bad now, but they're definitely not nearly as, uh, powerful as they were, so. Hey, what's up, Goyard? Welcome back, dude. Hello. All right, bet. He went to Bandit Keith? Okay, it's Trimid. <laughs> I was about to say, bro, what up? Uh, sad Greek human. I mean, Cog, that's back. There are dragons everywhere. Ah, yeah. Yo, Sandman, thank you so much for the Prime, dude. Thank you, my guy. It's really appreciated. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the sub, dude. Shout out to Amazon Prime. Jeff Bezos exclusive. <laughs> Next should be water. I don't know. Uh, from all the harpies that I've seen lately, I think harpies may be in the uh, in the sights next for whatever we have. Can't do my moves, but hey, what's up, Kev? Welcome back, dude. Hello. All right. Oh, he does have Oracle. Bet. To get Destiny, Ro do you mean you, is that that's Destiny Hero, right? Yeah, they're they're missing their good stuff. They're missing their stuff. Why does Harpies can be the power card? Yeah, probably. Just depends on what they decide to release next. And we only just got a new box, so it's it's gonna be a while. But yeah, I would prefer them to power creep. But wait, what? <laughs> flip face down and then flip it up. Hey, what's up, Nightmare? Welcome back, dude. Alright, so we have a cruiser. We have, oh man, this is like a third Trimid deck we've seen. There's been a lot more Trimids than usual. Water's lame. <laughs> yeah, water, water did get crept a little bit. I feel like their matchup against Blue Eyes is better now. Dragonic Knights? I don't even know what that one is. Uh, why wasn't there an EX box sale yet? There may be something coming up because the, what, the KCGT or whatever is coming soon or something like that, so. Two days before ban list, Lamal. Can't be negated. Yeah, Harpies uh, are very consistent and have powerful effects, but they are kind of flimsy. They do kind of die to most removal that's getting played now, so. One Diva. Bro, easy. Just flip Divine Wrath or Fiendish Chain. I'm kidding, by the way. <laughs> That's just always what I hear. Oh, man. Mm, not a bad start. Yeah, not a bad start. He's got Hunter, Dancer, and a Cruiser up on the board. So, 5k life and a couple of uh, field, swells, field spell swaps. So, and Yeah, Harpies kind of just took the place of Bude. <laughs> Hmm. So, Meme Maker's turn now? What's he got? What will he do? 
new automat skill later today. Wait, is there a new skill? Did I miss that? <laughs> yeah, Beaud is still playable. We we did actually see Blue Eyes put in some work in this match earlier, so yeah, they're still playable. <laughs> Change on a lot of play. Oh, yeah. Regardless of current meta viability, what are some hard counters to current meta decks? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, Blue Eyes didn't... It didn't get hit that much, but... I don't know. I've never been, like, on the... On the... The ban train. Yeah, I don't... I think the changes are on the 10th. I don't, I don't think they're, I don't think they're happening yet. Alright, he's gonna perfume her. Okay, okay. I was about to say, what's happening? We, we took a moment to think. We had big thinky. Alright, so he's got perfumer and oracle. Oh, overlay? Hmm. For the sin. Oh. Oh, he's gonna go for it. He's going full on Gabonga. Hmm. Kind of weird. 5,044. Hmm. Alright, Hunter. Before he goes away, he's going to swap the field spell out. It's kind of interesting. And, uh, yeah. Cruiser in Grave effect activate, too. you all bounce. Bro, he bouncing on out of there. Hmm. Yeah, so search deck and add one to hand. <laughs> Thanks for activating. Yeah, I was about to say, it's kind of like you didn't really get rid of it. <laughs> Zex Sullivan was way too long. It was a little long. I've been finished with it for like almost a week now. Well, maybe it wasn't, maybe it didn't run too long. Maybe the event was just too short. It was pretty easy. Especially because, like, even if you lose the duels, you still get a move on the board or whatever. Like, I don't know. It's kind of pointless. It's <laughs> the best deck other than Harpies. Uh, there are a few. Uh, Fire King is pretty strong. Uh, Thundra seems decent to me. Obviously, Blue Eyes is still, <laughs> is still doing things, much to the dismay of many Duel Links players. There's a few. Oh my god, bro. He just cleaned him out. Oh my god. King Olam? Yeah. Wait. Did he do it? Did he do it, though? I mean, Lightning's board's clear. And even with the gain, the gains he got off of the field spell last turn, that's still lethal. Can he special summon a grave? Bet. Wait, but he doesn't have anything in the grave. He's only got a cruiser and a king on him. Bruh. Why in defense? I guess because he probably doesn't need it. Yeah, king. he's activating king on effect at the moment. Okay, he's special summoning from hand. He's got Sphinx, bro. And, and Meme Maker has no... He needed a spell. He needed to just put it back in his hand. But he didn't have one more to follow it up. So... Yeah. We're going to pass back over to Lightning. And now he can just probably start... Well, mm, he's got two back row, though. Should have made a Dweller. Hmm. Yeah, the, the, uh, the Sin didn't really do much for him. Yeah, no worries. I I'm not the end all be all authority. Like you know, you gotta you gotta find what works with your play style, what you like too. That's important. But and everything is so volatile right now because the ban list hasn't even actually hit yet. So I'm sure there'll be some changes. I'm sure we're not looking at the complete final list of what decks are good. But T T H easy. <laughs> Wait, he didn't use any back row. So he lost the Cyber Slash and the Harpy Lady 1. Oh my god. 
Yeah, I think he went way too overextended there, and I think that he is paying the price. Because he's got two in back row and three in hand, so he could recover from this. Chandler first? Okay, yeah, he'll be fine. <laughs> oh no, the TTH! Uh, maybe, um, maybe Swallow's Nest? No, nothing! No, he is scooping out. He said, I got nothing left. So, hey, Viper, thank you for the follow. Thank you. All right. So that means that uh, YGL is at match point. They need one more win to win this thing. It is nine to seven. Meme Maker has one deck left. Which deck do you think is going to win MCS? Hmm. Hey, cool. Uh, Coos, I think. God, I'm sorry. Feel, bully me in chat if you want. I suck at pronouncing names. Um, what's gonna win MCS? Uh, I really want to put my money on Harpies, to be honest. I would like to see something come out of left field and win, but Harpies not a bad one. So, hey, hey, thank you for the follow as well. Thanks everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me in this. We're uh, we're only a couple duels away from the end here, so stick around. We're almost done. Meme Maker is down to his last deck, and this is Divine's last deck in the tournament. Fire King's not a bad choice either. Betting on FK. Seems good. I think it's a good choice too. Dark World? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen anything particularly crazy with Dark World yet. The MCS would be a great time for them to to show up and shine a little bit. Cuz I've seen several different decks, but like none of them I'm like a huge fan of. All right, we're back. They're at the table and ready. This is match point for YGL. They can walk away and even out their record 5 and 5. Which, uh, in their division, uh, which, uh, Dragon Ravine, they're ranked 6, but so many teams are very close in record that, uh, this would be a very, very good win for them. Uh, this is their first season with Team Wars, so, I mean, uh, a last-minute qualify with, uh, with, uh, this win would be great, so. And it looks like we have, uh, some water at the end. A name with X follows by, oh no, yeah, that do kind of be me. We got water. All right, heavy infantry first into the diva. All right, let's go. He's set up. So we have a diva, and there is nothing that lightning can do about it. He's just gonna have to take it. And keep in mind, uh, YGL still has Kami that has not played yet. So Fire King gonna win the MCS. Thirty cards unbeatable. Ah, nothing's unbeatable. Nothing's unbeatable. But Fire King is definitely a good bet too. I just bet on Harpy because I'm an old, old man when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! And I like the original series, so I like seeing Harpies as, like, a deck that's pretty solid, so. Fire King's good, though. Alright, my man got, uh, Diva, Heavy Infantry, and Marksman. He is, he's set up. Let's go. Let's get some Xyz, bro. We've seen the water. Now we need the XYZ. All right, Heavy Infantry and Diva into an Abyss Dweller. It's me. I'm an Abyss Dweller because I dwell the Abyss. Because they're free to play. Are they? I don't I don't know. Need a couple Ultra Rares. A lot of their cards aren't too hard to get, but... Eh, I guess it depends on what you define free to play. They're a little bit outside of what I would call them, but... It's super subjective. John Top of almost playing Witchcraft or Harpies, I almost considered Fire Kings. I mean, it's a good pick. It's a really good pick. Alright, Lightning has Cruiser and a Master on board. Let's go. Three Book of Moon F2P. XD. Yes, the most free to play. Book of Moon. Everyone's favorite free to play spell card. Alright, Abyss Dweller. Stopping the graveyard effects and the infantry to blow up the master. Oh boy. Alright. The water exceeds are doing water things. And lightning ends on two back row, so. 
I mean, TTH would be great. Pulse TTH, I'll call it. That's what I'll call it. I almost picked it just because some dude mentioned it in Winnie Point Battles, which, of course, it did. It's not a fast deck. That's true. Let's go. All right. Meme Maker has lethal. We're swinging in. Hey, there's the TTH. Now, where's the pulse? Where's the pulse? And then call me Esperoba. Because we absolutely ESP out here. Uh, there really is no way to get that card anymore. Uh, not at the moment, right? Fire King best deck. Alright, so he does get in for some damage at least. With, uh, Lightning still having one more back row. Flip Pulse. Flip Pulse so I can be ESP man. Mind Reader. 10 Quintillion IQ. It's the middle one. That's the one he hasn't played yet. Oh man, does he not have another monster? Oh jeez. Uh, meme maker may actually be able to push it to eight to nine maybe i don't know and landing of tax squad he's gonna draw a card he's still got one back row he's in decent shape remember how people were praying pokemon would be bad yeah i think a lot of people i don't know if underestimated is the right word but i think they just kind of came out of nowhere. Alright, heavy infantry. So we're definitely going to see another territory of the sharks. And no, uh, no TTH. That's already done, so... You can't just blow up this board. <laughs> Yosinju can... Yeah, Yosinju is a really solid choice right now. I've been building them and trying them out myself. Because I saw them doing some crazy stuff. Tanky, man. Tanky helps. Alright, so, he still has one Territory of the Sharks activation left. Does he use it now, or does he maybe try to punch in? Do it. Weather Painters 2. I haven't seen Weather Painters in a while. I watched, I think I watched that one battle phase where, <laughs> like, there was a, I think it was in quarters or semis. Uh, literally, like... It was like Weather Painter versus Weather Painter or something. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> uh, you'll send you in 200 words or less. Um, well, they're really good at summoning their board and then putting it all back in their hand. And yeah, they'd use a lot of hand traps to try and stop their opponents from being able to attack. So it is kind of, yeah, stall control. Two words. Good enough. You stop by Harpy's Hunting Ground. Yeah, I haven't seen them since Harpy's came out. I haven't seen them in a while. That the the battle phase I'm thinking of was before the Harpy box, so it's been a while. And with all the Harpy decks that are getting played, I don't think Weather Painter can survive. As much as I like Weather Painter, I think it's cool, but Uh What's up, Renji? I always find it funny how you would logically think people would have a good feeling how to use cards with TCG. So different, the impact of the cards. Yeah, that's the thing, is a lot of people say this is going to be good or this is not going to be good. But a lot of that knowledge comes from TCG. And, like, it doesn't really work that way. Like, some things do apply, but in a lot of cases, the game is different enough that it doesn't always work out that way. Because, I mean, you know, if you told a TCG player that, like, Duel Links players are begging for Blue Eyes to get banned or, like, get massacred on a ban list... They would probably look at you sideways. <laughs> Be like, what are you talking about? Why? Mm. Alright, let's try again. He gets in! Oh my god, he does it! Meme Maker knocks out Lightning, bro. He's hanging in there, and now they're both down to one player. He's kind of doing it, though. He's kind of doing it. So lightning goes down. And Divine is now 8 to 7. They close it to a one win gap. Are we getting 9-9? Nine, nine? Is it gonna happen? So Lightning is down and Kami is the last one standing. Can God even help them now? Uh okay, meme maker. No, wait, sorry. Wrong one. Meme Maker is two and one. 
Still got to get two more. And lightning ends on two and two. My bad. Sorry. Uh, it looks like all the records are good now. Well, this has turned into a longer war than I thought. It looked a like it was going to be a little fast in the beginning, but it's definitely panned out differently than I thought. Uh, I got, not going to lie, I got caught by DLM thinking this was mini Yu-Gi-Oh. Now it's really not. kind of want to play Yu-Gi-Oh again. <laughs> it's a old Master Duel Online. Uh, I don't think that Konami has revealed any more details about the Master Duel game yet. They haven't really said anything new. The Rush Duel game is coming out first, so I'm assuming once that drops in uh, August, I think, we'll probably have more info or get more by then. Yeah, Bude Spirit is a great synchro for sure, my guy. 100%. Uh, clan Wait, Clan Wars rules or Team Wars rules? Because there is a Clan Wars and it's different. Match so close, can't breathe. Yeah, it's pretty close. We're 8 to 9 now. We, we may get a game uh, 19 situation. Alright, Kami has the Harpies now. Uh, we are Cyber Slash, uh, Harpy Lady 1, Harpy's Feather Rest for the 2 card draw. Pretty solid start overall, especially if the draws are good. Okay, he's got one back row as well. Well, Clan Wars is a different league. Like, this is this is Team Wars, and Clan Wars is a league that exists, but they have, like, completely different rules. Yo, he's got the MST. Kill the back row. Use it or lose it. Is it a... It may be a Swallow's Nest. Hmm. What's he gonna do? It is! Hey, let's go, bro! So he's gonna swap out the Harpy Lady one. Maybe Oracle or something? I don't know. What helps? Book of Moon! Oh no, bro! He's gonna flip the Cyber Slap. Wait. Oh, okay. That's fair. So, yeah. Uh, oh, Perfumer. Okay. Yeah, Perfumer's fine. Yee -yee. Yeah, Clan Wars, they all play at the same time. Team Wars, it's all one at a time. Ooh, he's got the Marksman. All right. With that Cyber Slash down, I mean, this this could be GG right here. <laughs> Infantry and Diva, but he's got Marksman and Angler, so... Hey, Drymars, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Uh, are Yosinjis worth investing in if I already have Fire Kings? Hmm... I guess at that point, the question is, do you want to play Yosinju? Because <laughs> Fire King's really good, and I think Yosinju is really good, but maybe Fire King is a little stronger. I don't know. I haven't seen enough of him. I want to play Yosinju myself. Oh, he's got... Oh, he went in for the Spider Shark. Oh? He went for the Spudr. Do they choose to match up? Uh... No, like they can, they each player can submit two decks. They can run the same deck twice if they want, but they can submit two decks. And uh, once they lose, they have to go to their other deck or just stay on the same deck if they only have one. Uh, but they don't choose. Well, they choose which player goes up next. So like once a player gets eliminated, once they lose twice, then the team can decide who, who goes next. So yeah, there is some like counter picking in terms of, you know, who do we send up that has a deck that could counter what we're facing right now? But basically, whoever wins stays on. The suicide to Spider for Tretch Pop? Uh. Oh, he's got a Harpist! And then the Hunting Ground. Blow up the back row, let's go. <laughs> yeah, Book of Moon. There's been a lot of Book of Money. I mean, it's not too surprising. He's already, Meme Maker's already gone through two of the books, dude. And he's still got Spider. What did he top deck, though? The back row. All right, fair enough. But now that's a, that's a dead harpist. Oh, wait, no? Ugh. He didn't kill it? Wait, does it have a graveyard effect? I forget. I don't see Harpist that much. Yard. Uh, What's well, in the graveyard? I just sent there this turn. Oh, okay. Okay. Fair enough. 
I guess he's going to wait to try to go in for the win. He doesn't want the Harpist effect to go off. Yeah, there definitely are mirror matches. We had some mirrors in this war earlier. Okay. Tretch, maybe? Oh, yeah, you might be right. My man has the 10,000 IQ in chat. Let's go. Yeah, flips Tretch. Wipes out the board. Yeets him out of there. And now uh, I think that may be... Mm, I don't know. He might still have something. But Kami uh, may be out of stuff. Oh no, his board's open. This may be it. We may be going to game 19. Oh my god. Is it gonna happen? Top deck diva. I will lose it if that happens. I will 100% lose it. He just needs something to make lethal. Uh. Uh. He can do it. He can do it right here. Go to game 19, bro. Deep Sea Diva. Anything. He just needs, what, 1,400 damage? That's all he needs. Anything that can attack. Anything. Yeah, if it was Diva, he would have done it, so. Hey, Giampi, thank you for the follow. Welcome. Hello. Howdy. No, nothing. He doesn't even put it down. Nothing! He passes! Kami down to 1400! Didn't fall last week. Oh, it's all good, no worries. Okay, yeah. Uh, Channeler, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! Yep, Perfumer Effect. Go get that Elegant Egotist. Oh no! Oh no! I think this may be it! He's still got three in hand! Oh no! Cyber Slash summoned. He's got an elegant egotist in hand. That's it. That's it. No! <laughs> he fought so hard. He fought so hard to stay in the game. And that's it. Special Summon Harpy Lady won. And that is gonna be it. YGL takes it over Divine. Kami with the with the game 18 victory. And YGL ends a uh, regular season on a five and five record. They break even in their in their first outing as a as a squad. That's that's pretty impressive. That is super impressive. I have to say, you can't be even if they don't make it into qualifiers or into playoffs, considering how close this year is. Like one. Oh, top deck infantry. No. That's so sad, dude. I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. It was real close, though. You hung in there, man. All right. So that is it for this war. YGL wins 10 duels to 8. And uh, there was some crazy stuff. We saw Biakia win 5 duels in this war. That is by far the most I personally have ever seen. So, yeah, big big props to him for putting YGL on the map in this game. Definitely not a player you want to give up for sure. And, uh, yeah, even on Divine's side, they had a ton of very even, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? It's 2 a.m. <laughs> they had a lot of even contribution from all their members. So, yeah, they, uh, they did really well. So, uh, it's kind of a tournament. It's more like a league. I'll send you the link to their Discord, though. Yeah, this has been a part of Team Wars for anybody that's not familiar. Here's the link to the Discord if you're interested in joining because this is the last week of regular season play. After this, we're going to be moving into playoffs and everything is so incredibly close. So many teams are on the cusp of qualifying into playoffs. So, yeah, um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of playoff spots that are kind of up in the air at the moment. And uh, we're going to have to see how this weekend plays out. So... It's hard to tell whether or not YGL has made it in or not, but either way, 5-5 five and five in their freshman season together is a really solid way to start off a team, so I don't think they have anything to be disappointed in. So, Alright, uh, well, that is it for this war from me, uh, but I will be back in about, uh, about the same time tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be bringing you... Hold on, I'm pulling up the time so that I don't say something stupid. Um, <laughs> at... Uh, Sunday, May 9th, 9 a.m. Eastern, I am going to be uh, 
presenting BZ versus Claw Clan as part of Team Wars as well. Uh, so be sure to come on by for that one. Uh, I'm super excited to see them. I have not gotten to cast uh, Claw Clan yet, so I'm interested to see what they bring to the table in uh, the last day of regular season action for Team Wars Season 9. So uh, that's all for me for now. Thank you all for coming, and thanks to everybody that followed and uh, subbed and all that good stuff. So uh, more to come very shortly tomorrow. I got another match, so feel free to come on by and watch that one too. So uh, for now, though, have a have a good weekend, everybody, and uh, enjoy your duels if you're dueling. If not, then uh, have a nice, relaxing weekend. <laughs>